Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if baddest Deku fall in love with Momo, movie? So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Paris Lycan, link is in the description, also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. All Might I'm glad you came, you wanted to discuss the possibility of your new successor. Please it, I already poured tea. Thank you, Nezu, I'll be sure to enjoy it. The principal of UA and All Might started their conversation, but, as they finished discussing Mario, Nezu began a new topic. The speaking animal placed his teacup down and pulled out a folder, placing it on the coffee table between them. There is another reason that I'm glad you were able to meet with me. He actually accepted your recommendation application and is enrolling into UA. The photo had slipped out of the folder. All Might grabbed it and brought it to his face. Oh, young Midoriya did, I'm grateful. Although he has grown into quite the, er, scraper, I'm still proud of him. Yes, I called his school, and they confirmed it for me. He is well known for reasons, although his teachers remarked on his potential. All Might clutched the photo. It's hard not to imagine him going down a dark path after losing his parents. I keep failing him, but now I have an earnest chance to make it up to him, as a teacher, and turn him into a fine hero. Actually All Might, he signed up for general studies. Nezu laughed, a little nervous. What? That's right, two of our very own students were accepted into UA. The teacher announced it to the class. Bakugo is going for the hero course. All the students already knew he had the strength for it and were about to congratulate him, but, as usual, Bakugo was Bakugo and obnoxiously patted his own shoulder. And Midoriya, huh? Bakugo's eyes narrowed into a glare in the middle of his celebration. The whole class was silent as they turned to the student. Hey, where's Midoriya? Don't tell me he ditched again. The teacher ruffled his hair in distress. That damn Deku Bakugo started off in thought. He's the only one who's dared stand in front of my path towards being the number one hero, UA will be different. Unfortunately for Bakugo, the teacher forgot to mention that Izuku would be attending general studies. Regarding Izuku Midoriya, he had spent the day, as he would any other, and was now beginning to head home. He had passed a sidewalk with a storm drain. And the sludge slithered along, following him through the sewers. The thug was waiting for a moment to strike and take over his body to get away. All Might was already chasing him. Izuku walked into a tunnel that had a manhole in the middle of it, and the sludge decided to use the opportunity, starting to sneak out, lifting the cover. Except it was stuck, or more like there was a weight on it. In frustration and panic for All Might, he forced it open, blowing the lid up into the air. So you were following me. Izuku jumped off the manhole cover, flipping in air and facing the sludge. Nani you were the counterweight. Idiot, you're wide open. The sludge wasted no time lunging itself at the airborne Midoriya. It was too fast for the sludge to comprehend. Before he knew it, Izuku had already trapped him in a bottle and capped it. Although your quirk looks powerful, it still has to follow the properties of liquid, meaning you have to take the shape of your container. You can't escape if it's a watertight seal. What? How did you even figure that all out by a quick glance? The sludge had to mentally slow down the events that had just transpired. It was as if I was being sucked up by the bottle as soon as I went after him. No that would mean I would have felt a vacuum pulling me in. It was more like he was constantly positioning the bottle in front of me, leading me in without missing a single drop, but that would be impossible. Unhand him, villain. All Might had burst out of the manhole ready to save any civilian in need. That was until he saw the situation. Young Midoriya. Wait, have you seen any villains? I was chasing one, but seemed to have lost him. Then he saw the bottle of sludge in his hand. He rubbed the back of his hair. I should have figured you would deal with him if he were hostile towards you, but young Midoriya, it's better to leave those dangers to the heroes. As he walked to him, the greatest hero the world has ever seen was standing in front of Izuku Midoriya, and all he could say was, TCH. Ashinori had a sweat drop staring at the delinquent. Izuku Midoriya was wearing his school uniform, but it was unkempt without a care having rolled up sleeves. His hair was a mess of forest, and his face had a few scars, one over his lips, another on his right eye, and a final one across the bridge of his nose, his arms, and hands just as cut up. His eyes were wild yet always seemed to be clear and decisive, and the dark bags under his eyes suggested a lack of care for sleep. Is that really any way to talk to your legal guardian? Toshinori was always trying to be the parental figure for Izuku. Here's the villain you were looking for. Izuku tossed him the bottle and began to walk away. Boy, wait, young Midoriya. I heard you enrolled in the UA I just wanted to say, thank you for allowing me to help with my recommendation. Having an earnest smile. Izuku stopped walking and turned the upper half of his body to All Might. He had his school bag over his shoulder with one hand and was pointing at him with his other hand. I didn't do it for you, old man. I did it so my mother didn't have to worry about me in heaven. He continued his walk after saying what he wanted to say, heading to his home. As rebellious as ever, I see. 
All Might's earnest smile was still on display, used to Izuku's cold behavior. He glanced down at the bottle with the sludge villain. He was able to defeat such a villain with little to no effort, even though Nezu introduced him to the option of Mirio being the next to inherit one for all. All Might was also interested in Izuku becoming his successor. It's an idea that has been brewing in me since I took in that child and noticed his potential, but he has no interest in being a hero. Yet, Izuku Midoriya has a duty to live his life how he believes is right, as his adoptive father, it is my duty to cultivate him into the person his parents would be proud of. They parted ways, as All Might went to turn in the villain to the police, and Midoriya was headed home. Izuku reached the residential area close to his home, and it was at a cross path that he was confronted by Bakugo. Boy, Deku, who do you think you are enrolling into UA, huh? Hello Kakin. Unfazed by the explosive presence. It's that damn attitude of yours I can't stand. Bakugo didn't hesitate to leap at him with an explosion boost. There's no way a quirkless nobody like you can be a hero. He had his arm ready to blast Izuku. A hero? With shadowed eyes, but they cleared just as fast. Wait, Kakin, how about a coin flip? I have some leftover change, we can use this. Izuku reached into his pocket pulling out a coin, holding it in between his index and middle finger, showing it to Kakin, causing him to stop an inch away from blowing up Izuku, but he hadn't even flinched. If you win, I don't go to the hero course, if I win, you don't have a say in the matter, deal. Preferring to de-escalate the situation. Am I hate you Deku, but fuck if you aren't reasonable. Sure I'll take your wager, but I flip the coin. Knowing you, you'll probably do a dirty trick if you flip it. Swiping it from his hand. Sure, Kakin, I'll call it air. And he flipped it. Izuku stared at the coin as it peaked in the air. Heads. After calling it, he began to walk away. What? Bakugo was slightly shocked as he passed him, causing him to miss the catch. He glared at Izuku's back before checking the coin. Heads. Oh, and I forgot to say, but I already had planned on attending general studies. He raised his hand back to him in a wave of goodbye. Damn it, he tricked me again. Exploding his anger into the air. See you at UA, Kakin. All Might was hidden around a corner in his skeleton skinny state, having seen the whole thing. He chose to de-escalate the situation knowing the other kid's destructive ability, had a chance of injuring nearby civilians, and also could cause property damage. He truly has the potential of becoming a great hero, I feel it is him who must inherit one for all. All Might stared at Izuku's fleeting figure with his blue eyes of resolve in the shadows. Although, how can I convince him to be a hero when I'm the reason he hates them? She was looking up at the school she was finally going to start attending. Someone walked past her causing her to realize she was gawking up at the school building when she was supposed to be getting to class. She took a step but tripped in her excitement and embarrassment. Be careful. A student who had walked ahead of her had turned around and caught her by firmly holding her chin with his thumb and index finger, he then lifted her head and straightened her out. Her cheeks tinted and she had to gulp because of their closeness. But before she could react to her own emotions and expectations, he let her go and continued walking, heading to the front entrance. What was that her eyes glistened before she recompassed herself and bowed. Thank you. She said loudly enough for him to hear. He simply raised the same hand that caught her in a wave. She had a closed eye smile hoping they were in the same class. Welcome to class 1A. She sighed, staring out the window. They weren't in the same class. I didn't see him during the entrance exam either. Then she found a way to cheer herself up. Perhaps he's in class 1B, or what if he's in a higher year? He did have that mature aura surrounding him. And she continued to ponder him until lunch. She had made some new friends in her class, and they were sitting together talking about the start of the school year and how exciting it was to finally be working towards becoming a hero. She glanced around, hoping to catch a glimpse of him. Her eyes widened. She did see him, he was sitting alone at a table. She thought it would be the perfect opportunity to introduce herself to him. She was going to go talk to him, but another student beat her to it. Izuku Midoriya, news travels fast. Most of the school already knows about you. He set his tray of food on the table in front of Izuku. I figured. So, what do you want, we're in the same class, it's Shinso, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm in the same boat as you. They all heard about my quirk and chose to stay away from me. Their quirk. Ah, brainwashing. As long as someone responds to my question, I can control them for as long as I want. The effect only wears off if I release it or if the one under my control is disrupted. Shinso explained as he sat in front of Izuku. That's so? Then shouldn't you be in the hero course? Shinso's eyes widened before calming. You would think so. He was glaring off to the side. Midoriya noticed but didn't comment. Regardless I figured I might as well try to make some allies, that is unless you're going to run away from my quirk. Shinso tilted his head, staring daggers into Midoriya as if provoking him. No. No. You already explained your quirk to me, if you had any hostility, you wouldn't have shown your hand so quickly. 
Maybe I did that just so you could let your guard down. Maybe, but Izuku lifted his fist. If you were intending to use it then it would all come down to reaction time. Reaction time? But you know, everyone has a different reaction time, and it works the same for quirks because they act like a muscle in our bodies. Meaning it just depends on how fast you activate your quirk compared to if I can react fast enough to hit you before your quirk takes effect, oh? But how would you know when I activate my quirk, I could add your next response. Shinso smirked, ready to use it. The only reason I didn't use my quirk on him earlier was because I wanted to see if he would react like everyone else, but no matter. I know he will respond, I'll show this school I can run this delinquent out and earn a spot in the hero course. At that moment, Izuku Midoriya clenched his fist, elbow firmly planted on the table, and said, want to try it. Glaring at Shinso with a boundless resolve. He's not bluffing. Is there really a way he can hit me before I activate my quirk? No, the problem is that he's confident he can tell when I activate it. And Shinso knew he had to decide in that split second. He sincerely laughed. I can't believe you figured out a way to counter me. Most people would prefer to just not talk to me, as a defense, but you actually came up with a counter, and are actually talking to me. It's the first time I not only feel my quirk being tested, but also the first time in a while a conversation felt this refreshing. I hope we get along, Izuku Midoriya. Likewise, Hitashi Shinso. Izuku unfolded his fist, offering it to him. And he took it, both shaking hands sealing their friendship. She lost the opportunity to introduce herself at lunch, but would wait for after school. And that's exactly what she did. Her and her group of friends were walking the halls, mostly just exploring the school, that's how she put it, but a real motive was to find him. Usually no one would go to such effort to simply introduce themselves to a stranger that they had a brief exchange with, but this was the first time in her boring mundane life that she ever felt the sensation of her heart, skipping a beat at the thought of someone. And she did find him, except he was already on his way, leaving school. She tried to steer her group towards him, but it wasn't working. She was losing hope for today. It's okay I have the rest of the school year to interact with him, but it would have been like a romantic movie if we introduced ourselves to each other on the first day of school, nah. Their hope was fleeting. It's me, appearing regularly in the hallway. All night, the new teacher had slid to a stop in front of him, and it seemed like he wanted to talk to him. Soon they were both headed to an office alone together. All might left with that student. She didn't realize she asked aloud. Their friends looked where she was. Oh I heard about him, he's the odd one out, right? Yeah, yeah. I heard his hit is as powerful as a star, and that his knuckles are as tough as platinum because of all the fights he's been in. Mina informed, star? Platinum? She asked confused, feeling like it was a reference she didn't get. No, they are as hard as diamonds. Toru corrected. Well, diamonds are unbreakable. Enough. Be considerate of those of us who feel left out. What do you know about him? Why would All Might want to talk to him? Hmm, he probably found out that Izuku Midoriya is a punk and is probably trying to set him straight. Even if he just started, All Might sure does take the initiative. The punk? Wait, his name is Izuku Midoriya. Wait you haven't heard? I thought everyone did because he's UA's first delinquent. Toru seemed to be cheering. Someone leaked his info, and now we all found out about it. That seems a little harsh, no. We don't know him. Well did you hear, apparently he always gets into fights leaving the other guy in the hospital not caring who started it. He doesn't even take responsibility. Mina crossed her arms. It's best if we stay away from someone like that. She then sighed. But I want to know more. Contradicting herself. It doesn't matter, he's in general studies, it's not like he's important or anything. He'll probably cause trouble and get kicked out. General studies. That means she glanced at him and All Might finally disappeared. Was my intuition wrong, if he isn't going to be a hero then? Young Midoriya I'm glad you decided to join me, please I already have some tea prepared. Yeah, what is it, old man? He sat down, grabbing the teacup by the handle. And after a lengthy explanation All Might revealed the truth of his quirk, one for all. Izuku Midoriya had shadowed eyes after hearing all of it. There's no reason for you to lie about that, it's actually something you would try to keep secret. Meaning there's only one reason you would tell me. Exactly. Young Midoriya, I'll have you become the next wielder of, I refuse. Midoriya slammed his teacup on the coffee table with an impactful thud, although his expression remained calm. That power should be given to some who is worthy, yes, my thoughts, as well. And for someone who has aspirations to be the greatest hero. That's exactly why I won't accept the burden. If it were someone like me to have that power, then it would be too selfish of humanity. Hashinori was taken aback by his words, but thought it through. He didn't even consider the aspect of using one for all for himself, simply how to benefit others, the essence of one for all he smirked, his blue eyes shining with will. 
Young Midoriya, that type of mindset is exactly why I believe you should inherit it. You say it would be selfish if you were to have it, but I truly believe if you were to gain this power, then you would rise above and act selflessly, yes, for the sake of others. You don't get to decide that, old man. Izuku pointed at him, harshly. Is that so? Young Midoriya, what if I told you, the only way to pass on my quirk is by having you ingest my DNA and having me consciously want you to receive its power. All Might extended his arms. Izuku's eyes widened. That means, the tea. That's right. Before having you join me, I put a little sweat into your cup. It's been a few minutes since your first sip, hasn't it? He stared down his adoptive son. Now what will you do? I won't force you to take my power. I simply want you to understand, please accept it, Midoriya, Izuku. He slid it open. All Might didn't realize he had walked to a window. Izuku calmly lifted his hand up to his face before plunging it into his mouth. He forced himself to vomit out the tea. What? He took away my opportunity to give him one for all, instead he broke through and found his own path. I see, then I guess I can't do anything about it. He smiled to himself proud of his son's willpower. He slid the window shut and turned back to All Might. Old man, I'm going to punch you with the hand I vomited on. That caused All Might's mood to deflate. Wait. Young Midoriya, it was a test, simply a test. I'm new to being a teacher so I figured I can try some out on you. He was flailing his arms about, hoping not to get hit. Please, not the puke fist. No. Young Midoriya. Poof. Before Izuku hit him, All Might had transformed into his weak state. Oh no I must have lost focus and turned back into the state. Tashinori took a peek at the hand that was meant to punch him, but it had lowered with no bad intent. PCH. Next time don't try to trick me. We both know we can be upfront, old man. Izuku barked. I'll keep what we talked about a secret like I assume you want, but I'm staying out of it. Ashinori noticed that Izuku was turned away from him, and his voice wasn't its usual roughness. Sorry for dropping all this information on you, but thank you, also please don't tell anyone about my weakened state. I can only be the symbol of peace for about three hours, if that were to get out, yeah, I understand. See you later, old man. Not once able to glance back at the skeleton skinny all might. Izuku had cleaned himself in the bathroom and was beginning to leave the school. At the front steps, he turned his head, staring up at the window they had just docked in. All Might was the guardian skeleton, when Izuku Midoriya was just a child he had lost his parents. He had no one except an adoptive father who was never there because he was the pillar of society. Because of it, Midoriya grew up believing that he wasn't a part of said society. He was never the one protected, even if the greatest hero had claimed him as his own. It was because of that exact connection that Izuku Midoriya felt more separated from the world. But every once in a while, Midoriya would feel the presence of someone. If he focused and made sure he wasn't caught, he could always see it from the corner of his eye. Izuku Midoriya was sure he could see a skeleton with blonde hair watching over him. Usually people call them guardian angels, but since it felt specific to him he called him his guardian skeleton. That man was Tashinori Yagi, watching over his adopted son in place of Izuku Midoriya's parents. Geez, always pretending he was so tough. Izuku smirked before walking away. As he finished walking off the steps, she tapped his shoulder before walking in front of him, facing him. She had waited for his conversation with All Night to end. He was on the last steps, staring at her with wide eyes. She was standing in front of the cherry blossom trees, and it looked like her hair was scattering along with the petals. The wind caught her words as she spoke, finally introducing herself to him. Even if he wasn't in the hero course, to her, he had a noble heart. She closed her lips with a small but tender smile. She was leaning forward, glancing down and to the side, tucking a loose strand of hair behind her ear. She hesitantly but excitedly took a few steps backwards, speaking earnestly, glancing up at him after introducing herself. So if you see me around, don't forget to say hello, alright? Looks like you already have an admirer, Midoriya. Shinso was at the top of the front steps after she had left. Izuku didn't bother to turn his head back to him, but did wait for his friend to walk down the steps. Is that what you would call it? He spoke. He had admirers before, but this was too sincere. Her fragrance was that of a mother, it was brief, but his eyes grew an enamored emerald. It left just as quickly. He hardened his eyes and shadowed them. Shinso reached him and they began to walk together. Hold it right there you two. We should have known the delinquent was behind this. Ah, who's that? One of your new lackeys, you sure do work quickly. Yeah, but we won't let you ruin the UAS beauty. Both Shinso and Midoriya had shadowed eyes, only bothering to tilt their heads back at the duo that harassed them. They both had the same annoyed thought. Lackey. Izuku knew he didn't need a lackey, and Shinso was ticked off that he was being underestimated. They both turned around, facing them completely. The other two were at the top of the stairs glaring down at them except Shinso, and Midoriya had broken into a smirk, trying to keep their composure. 
Hey, don't laugh. It's the first day of school, and we look like total tools. How can we be taken as serious heroes like this? It was Mineta and Kaminari. While Izuku was talking with All Might. The two in the hero course were hiding behind a corner and ranking all the girls who passed by, wiggling like horn dogs and ogling them. It was when Izuku vomited out the window and splattered on them that they were noticed. Their cries of disgust caught the attention of the students and they figured out what the two were doing. Suffice to say they didn't make it out okay and were determined to get revenge. Don't even try to deny it. I see those stains of vomit on your uniform sleeve. You picked the wrong guys to mess with, we're students of class 1A in the hero course. Mineta pointed an accusation, trembling with anger. He didn't care if this kid was the toughest delinquent. I'm in the hero course, he isn't. Of course, I'm stronger, besides I have Kaminari, we can't lose. Yeah, it was me. He actually admitted it. Both Mineta and Kaminari had blank eyes. I saw what you two were doing, so I tangled my vomit to splat on the both of you. He's even explaining why and how he did it. Pissing them off even more. Mineta couldn't take it and threw one of his balls at him. Izuku glanced at it. The vomit is stuck to it his eyes shadowed before glaring at Mineta. Oi, you expect me to take you seriously when your quirk is throwing sticky balls. Izuku then turned to Hitashi. This guy is in the hero course, and you aren't. Shinso was emitting a dark purple aura. Are both of you targeting me? We're not gonna waste our time on a weakling. Yeah, after we take care of him, you'll be running. And it happened. Trip over the stairs. Shinso turned away. Come on, Midoriya. Izuku walked along with him. Both of their eyes were shadowed by the setting sun. They both knew it. Pro heroes weren't measured by their morals. They were measured by their capabilities. Shinso knew this too well because society saw his quirk's greatest potential as one for evil, denying his dream. Izuku knew this because, as a child he denied the dream of every child in the society to be a hero, even if he was praised for his capability. He was bullied by Kakin and others as a child simply because didn't want to be like them and he was berated by the teachers because he didn't rise to the heroic expectation of his skill level. But because Kakin and the others always outnumbered him, whenever Izuku got into a fight, the majority always blamed him for it. As such Izuku was labeled a delinquent for defending himself. Right now, you're probably wondering why Kakin and the people who bullied Midoriya were believed while the one who was constantly fending for himself wasn't. I ask you, who would you believe if you lived in this society, a child who detest heroes or aspiring youths who want to become heroes? The students of class 1 were boarding the bus, getting ready to head for USJ. Time had passed since the first day of school, and eventually, the masses had spun the story of the perverted Mineta and Kaminari into a story where the delinquent bullied the two heroes in training into finding out about the girls in their class, explaining that he vomited on them out of anger because they weren't getting results, and subsequently beating them up. It was as if the masses refused to acknowledge that they were the ones that caused the perverted students' injuries because they were rising heroes. Shinso was even labeled as Midoriya's accomplice and a delinquent because of their friendship and his quirk. But she knew better. She had been waiting for Izuku to end his conversation with All Might after all. She had caught them spying and when she was about to confront them, vomit fell over them. She knew he wasn't at fault, but whenever she tried to clear his name the story was always twisted back into him being a bad apple. She glanced around. She hadn't talked to him since she introduced herself. I told him not to be a stranger. Clutching her fist over her chest, her eyes held a liquid shine. But it was at that moment that their eyes met. He was standing on the same steps he stood on when she introduced herself. He's probably ditching, isn't he? She lifted her other hand up and twinkled her fingers to him, saying goodbye. He simply nodded and averted his eyes, but that was more than enough for her as she stepped onto the bus with a giggling smile. So where are we going today? Shinso asked. Ever since he was labeled as bad he realized how pointless everyone else's view on him was. Both him and Midoriya would ditch when they knew it wasn't a test day. As long as they had the highest scores they were fine, especially when the teachers were forced to acknowledge that the two delinquents were the top two in class. Want to hit the arcade? Sure we can do some studying too. Ah, those teachers can't teach for shit. It happened as they walked past a dark alley. She bumped into his leg. Both Izuku and Hitashi turned to the little girl. Boy, Eerie why are you bothering the students? Sorry, my daughter is always causing trouble for others. Kai Chisaki scratched a hive on his forehead with his index finger under a white glove. His network of information had caught wind of an attack by a crew calling themselves the League of Villains, happening today, it was supposedly going to get all of the heroes' attention, so Chisaki's gang was playing it lax. And it pissed him off. Eerie was a lonely child. Solitude was her only friend, and that friend gifted her with the knowledge that today would be the best day to escape. Her friend, Solitude pulled through because when they were together, it was always quiet and she was able to hear them talk. 
So today was the day she decided to run away after hearing them talk about taking it easy. She was trembling with broken eyes. Izuku lowered and nestled her into a protective embrace. Is he your papa? Shinso's eyes widened. Midoriya's voice it's so soft. Isaki's eyes shadowed and his beak was ready for prey. Oi, I already told you, she's my daughter. I would like it if you stepped away from her. Now that I think about it, shouldn't you two be in school? Oh is it that you're both ditching? Bad influences like you should stay away from my child. Shinso's eyes went from Izuku to the other person. He's right. No matter what, the police would take his side. They might even charge us with kidnapping. But, both Izuku Midoriya and Hitashi Shinso had their eyes hidden with intense justice. I didn't ask you if you were her father. I asked her. Izuku stated, but his hunch was already confirmed as he arose, ready to face him and protect her. You aren't her father. It's etched on her face. Eerie was confused. What was this warmth? It wasn't a temperature, but a feeling. Eerie, are you sure you don't want to come back? Overhaul Uward, peeling off one of his clean white gloves. Her eyes pierced. And he saw it. She broke away, running back to Overhaul. Except a hand grabbed her shoulder and pulled her back from her fears. Eerie could only stand still. Izuku had stopped her, taking her place, sprinting to Overhaul. Nani he's too fast. He pulled his arm back, building up the torque. It was instantaneous. Izuku Midoriya had blasted a hole into Kai Chisaki's chest with his fist. How dare you terrify a child that doesn't even know how to ask for help. It is said that heroes are born usually during times of crisis where they rise to the challenge. When asked about this, the heroes usually say, my body acted without thinking, as if knowing what was right before I did. However, this was not the case for Izuku Midoriya, at this moment, he saw himself in Eerie when he was a child. Someone who was terrified, not knowing who to run to. It wasn't Izuku's body that reacted, it was his anger. Except Izuku knew he had All Might who watched over him. And so in this moment, yes this moment, young Midoriya had decided he would watch over her. Aichisaki was sent flying through the alley, crashing into a pile of bags and boxes. He coughed out and wheezed as he rolled over. I'm only alive because I was able to slip my glove off as he hit me. I fixed myself before I could pass out and die. It still hurts like hell. He coughed out spit, but it didn't escape the mask, and it irritated him causing more hives to grow. He stood up, trying to breathe evenly. He slowly began walking back to the student who just attacked him. Oi, you are students of UA right? The hero school. I recognize that uniform. Didn't they teach you to assess the situation before acting, not only that, but to use force to suppress not to eliminate. Seriously, kids these days. Give her back, and I'll forget any of this happened. Something's wrong. You just had a hole put into your chest, and you don't care not only that, but it's not there anymore, how'd you survive? Hitashi had run and curled Iri into a protective hug as soon as Izuku hit the stranger. He was slowly backpedaling with anxiety. Are you deaf? I said give her back. His irritation peaked. But he responded. Shinso smirked. Got you. Now, tell us what you have been doing to this child. His eyes were hidden. She's covered in bandages. Isaki's eyes were wide, realizing that his lips were opening, and he was about to spill everything he had worked towards to some random students. That must be that damn kid's quirk. I have to stop myself from talking. Ever since I found out about her quirk's nature, I've been his remaining gloves suddenly erupted, flying everywhere like sharp shards. Izuku's eyes widened. Watch out. Shinso shielded Eerie while Izuku shielded them, standing in front of them with his arms wide, taking the brunt of the force. Even if it was a glove, it felt like glass. Izuku was cut up, but he glanced back, the little girl was fine. Take her and get to my place, my gramps should be there, explain everything to him. We should be able to take care of it and get heroes here faster than if we call the cops, but just in case do that, as you go. Shinso was cut up a little, glancing up at Midoriya. What, but if I use my quirk, he already figured out how to stop its effect, even if he doesn't know how it's triggered, he'll definitely be more cautious. You need to move. His quirk had to be dangerous, he was able to heal his own wound and exploded the glove. I'll stay here and stop him. You get her to safety. Boy, but you just said so yourself, his quirk is dangerous. You don't even have one, how do you expect to, now? His eyes widened. He scooped up Yuri and started running out of the alley. Shit, he keeps asking me why I'm not in the hero course, and yet, here he is being a hero. Shinso sprinted down with Yuri in his arms. They had walked each other home a few times now, so he knew where his apartment was and knew it was close by. As long as I can get out of here. Where do you think you're taking her? Kai Chisaki slammed his hands on the ground and created tendrils to follow Shinso, flying past Izuku. Shinso turned back, realizing he was about to be pierced. That was until they all fell. What? The Bree had surrounded Izuku Midoriya because he had punched all the pillars that were chasing Shinso, breaking them apart. 
it's true his fists are as strong as diamonds. Shinso was awed, everyone had heard the rumors, but the only people who saw it were usually left in the hospital, only able to explain it in a hazy blur. Your opponent as Miyazuku was standing in between the shattered pillars, as he stared down Kai. Both of them are surrounded by the settling dust. Opponent? That's not something a hero should say. That's what I hate about villains. They always think that because heroes are the ones hunting them down that no matter what they won't be killed because the law is on their side. But I'm not a hero, and that's exactly why I called you my opponent, because this is a fight to the death. I actually had to take a step back at the intense glare in his eyes. Boy, you're serious aren't you? You really are. You're really getting on my nerves. His hives grew, but he tried to even out his breathing. He didn't realize that Shinso had escaped with Iri because Izuku had his attention. Fine, if you're so anxious to die. Then die. He slammed the floor again with his palms. The same trick Izuku asked, as he leapt, already seeing the spikes emerging from the ground, but with a twist. A person like you would lunge directly at me. A spear flew out the floor in front of Kai. You're already in the air. Izuku maneuvered, but it still stabbed him in the thigh. He winced, as he hit the ground, tumbling, and rolling, scraping himself. He caught his own spiraling momentum, and planted his feet in front of Chisaki. He adjusted his footwork before punching Chisaki's elbow, tearing off his arm with pure force. So that's how your quirk works, you can break down and rebuild anything you touch with your hands. If I rip them apart your quirk is useless. Blood gushed out of his arm. As long as I can touch you. Kai Chisaki waved his stump, splatting Izuku's eyes, blinding him. You're the one who said it was a fight to the death. Thrusting his only hand at Midoriya. I already saw it. Izuku spoke with a side dash. He impaled his knuckles into Kai Chisaki, piercing his stomach. He pulled his fist out just as quickly, spilling red on the pavement. Fool. As long as I have this hand, I already won. Coughing out blood. Chisaki rebuilt himself as he fell. He then removed his hand from his body and planted his palm on the ground. I'll rip you in half. A pillar erupted from in between Izuku's feet, rising to the sky, taking its victim with it. Even if you can heal yourself, it's wearing you and your quirk down. The movements are slowing and your breathing is rigid. Chisaki's eyes widened hearing the student's voice. It can't be. He struggled but lifted himself up and stared at the sky. He caught the point before it could shred him. Chisaki rushed to the pillar, breaking it apart, but Izuku had already swung off it, falling down in a twisting corkscrew, along with the broken off pieces. His fist was clenched, recalling the fear of a child, covered in bandages, and the fact that the stranger admitted to experimenting on her. His eyes were shadowed as he plummeted down to Chisaki. I'll erase you Chisaki threw his hand up at Midoriya. Izuku dropped his knuckles straight into Chisaki's palm, obliterating it before he could activate his quirk. The sheer force of his attack crashed Chisaki down, creating a crater. Nani. How did he get past my quirk? It doesn't make sense unless you have a quirk. Even though your friend said you didn't, you do, you have to. No human can react like that. That doesn't matter. They both heard the sirens coming. Looks like it's my victory. Chisaki's eyes widened. You said it was a fight to the death. Oh, about that, I would never bet my life against scum. Izuku Midoriya was standing proud. I just tricked you to distract you long enough for the authorities to come. I'm guessing Shinso already got the little girl to safety. So that's it, I went into this as a deathmatch, and he was simply luring me, distracting me from Eri. That's right, Eri left because she forgot that she belongs to me. Even though he was in a puddle of his own blood, he broke into a smirk. Your victory. No, it's mine. He used his remaining hand to create a hole in the ground. Izuku jumped back in time, but that's what he wanted, as he fell through it. As long as I live, I can reach Yuri. No matter what, she will be mine again. Thank you, because of this I have grown, I am truly thankful. He yelled before sealing the hole. Izuku's eyes widened. He gritted his teeth before punching into the ground, exposing it. But he already knew it, Overhaul, the first of many villains he would encounter, had escaped. It was the day after the encounter. She had heard he got into a dangerous scuffle. Although her class and herself were exposed to danger, as well because USJ was invaded, she was simply worried for his sake. She searched for him throughout the halls. Her eyes glistened as she saw him walking alone, the morning sun shining on the window, surrounding him. She ran up to him on instinct. She tried to speak, not able to stare at his hard eyes. She lifted her hand up to fix a loose strand of hair because of her nerves. As her hand reached her face, his hand cupped her cheek although different, it was still that same protective manner as their first day. Consciously or not the hand she had raised to adjust her hair, lapped over his, tenderly clamping it, without realizing. I heard USJ was attacked. He had lifted her face so he could stare at it properly. Just like the first day, all she could do was stare back at him. 
she noticed he had a few band-aids on his face, but nothing major, and this time she gulped out of relief, closing her eyes, letting herself be inspected by him. She sucked in a breath from his dominant presence, entranced by it. He tilted her head side to side, checking it before letting go of her. I'm glad you're okay. And he walked away. Her heart had that same fluttering of butterflies as before, and she placed her hand over it, trying to catch them and calm her heartbeat, yet not able to. Her cheeks heated into a beloved scarlet. He was worried about me, wasn't I the one supposed to be worried, and yet here he is caring about me in his own way. Oh, Izuku. It's pretty bizarre though, right? Yeah, yeah. She keeps trying to involve herself with that Midoriya, even after we keep warning her. A girl like her shouldn't waste her time on a delinquent like him. I don't get it. She obviously likes him. Well duh. But I mean, I get it, you too. No. For Todoroki, obviously. Right, he's so quiet and cool. They were gossiping like always, as Shinso ran past them, reaching Izuku's house. They brushed off the delinquent as usual, neither side ever acknowledging that the other was ditching. Shinso ran up the front steps and knocked on the door, or he was about to. Someone opened it before he could. He had nostalgic yellow gloves, pointing at Shinso and Eerie. Shinso, little girl, Gramps, heroes, is what he texted. And he sent me the location plus a recording. You must be Shinso, don't worry. Gramps is already on his way with the authorities, come inside I prepared tea, figuring you and her are pretty stressed. Guiding a very confused Shinso in. Thank you. He took the little girl from his hands and led them to the small kitchen. Hey there, what's your name, did Izuku save you? But I bet you were scared of his scarred face. He tried to help Yuri relax and realized she was in safe hands now. He knew what it felt like to be a terrified child scared of everything. But who's scarier, mine or his? He gave her a crusty smile, joking with her. Except for some reason Eerie wasn't scared, she actually raised her small hand up to his face. The both of you look really kind. Oh? Well, so do you. Shinso was sipping his tea seeing him interact with Eerie. Before spitting it out. Wait, who the hell are you anyway? He calmly turned to Shinso. I'm Izuku's older brother, Tenko Shimura. Nani? Boy, Papa, that attack on USJ, failed. She was leaning on the bar, slightly annoyed. Ah, you were right just like you said it would. Sorry, sweetheart, but did you do as you were told? Then her lips curved. Yes, he, I got some of the student's blood. Good, good. But guess what, Papa? Hmm, what is it? I also got some of All Might's. She giggled to herself with bloodlust. Emiko Toga. Leader of the League of Villains. Boy, rat, are you okay? Gran Torino was talking to Izuku after the fight with Overhaul. Izuku gave his gramps and the authorities a thorough breakdown of the situation. Izuku had narrow eyes after explaining everything. This isn't good though. Hmm, what do you mean? Gran Torino had his own thoughts on the matter, but would wait for the investigation. He said he grew because of our confrontation. He was already ridiculously powerful. The only weaknesses I could exploit was his agitation, but now I fucked up, Gramps. Now, now, there's a little girl in safe hands, let's worry about the rest later. Tashinori also had some trouble today. We can all talk at home and figure out what to do with the child. Yeah, I already sent the recording to the old man. Izuku had captured Overhaul's words when he was brainwashed with his phone and sent it to All Might and Tenko. After the incident between Izuku Midoriya and Kai Chisaki, it was decided the best course of action was for Eerie to stay at the UA dorms, close to Eraserhead, because she stated that she didn't know what her quirk was, but was scared of it, including the fact that she had been experimented on. Moving in with her to protect her was her new family. Her protective brother, Izuku Midoriya, yo. Her overprotective brother, Tenko Shimura, don't worry I only take off my gloves to wash them, or if I need to keep Yuri safe. Her granddad Torino. Don't expect much, I'm just an old man after all. And best dad, all might. Don't worry, I am here. It was a hype entrance given the individuals involved. All the other students could simply stare in bewilderment. The news had spread the word of the delinquent's heroic act, although he refused to answer any questions and simply glared at the camera till it was off him. Apparently, because of it, his family and Eerie were going to move into the UA for protection. The delinquent and All Might got along like father and son. They couldn't comprehend it. The student body tilted their head in mass confusion. Hey, that's his family. Then Ko was carrying a box and nudged his bro. Hoi, are you popular? He teased me. They're annoying. Izuku was also carrying a box as they walked. Technically he should have been in school along with the students, but he was ditching to help his family unpack. Come on boys let's settle in and celebrate. All Might was carrying most of the boxes. Tenko smiled. Sounds great, I'll cook and show Iri the joy of a warm meal. This confused the students even more. He's so pure despite his looks. Why is he a cinnamon bun? It feels like the roles are reversed. She almost fainted when she heard about his family. 
They all got settled in, Izuku had moved his things to a room on the top floor, while the rest of them had moved to the first floor. Toshinori, Iri, and Torino were all in the living quarters showing Iri cartoons, while Tenko was in the kitchen getting dinner ready. Izuku was sitting at the dining table, writing in his notebook. Hiri drew a detailed sketch of overhaul that he had drawn for the police, as well, and then jotted down any notes that he believed were important. He glanced over at Iri before staring down back at his notebook. He wrote down experiments with a question mark and circled it before closing the book as Tenko began serving the food. Ah, thanks. Moving his book aside. Tenko noticed. Izuku, you're such a softy. Knowing that Izuku was probably the most concerned for the little girl although not showing it. Ah, look who's talking. Torino jumped in, having smelled the grump. Glad to be one. Tenko kept his gentle smile throughout, such a simple contrast to Izuku's stern glare, but a distinct one between brothers. Ah, it smells delicious, young Shimura. Come on Iri his food will keep you full and warm. Okay. She nodded. They knew it was hard for a traumatized child to show expressions, so they let her go at her own pace with encouragement, although all of them couldn't deny the swell in their chest at a reaction. Iri had eaten a spoon full of food. It's so yummy. With a twinkle in her eyes. She eventually ate all of it and even asked for seconds. Her eyes began to water as she slowly lowered her spoon. My tummy hurts yet she somehow knew what this feeling was, being why she was so happy. Ah, you're probably full eerie. Full. This is how it feels like to be full. Having only been fed enough to survive, never knowing what it meant to enjoy a meal. And it tugged at all of them. It was a quiet but heartfelt dinner between the complex family. Izuku was on the roof of the dorms, staring at the night sky. He was hard in thought at the circumstances of his family. His brother, someone with arguably the most destructive quirk, disintegration. His gramps, a forgotten legend in the hero world. His old man, the world's greatest hero. Now child. That was being targeted by someone dangerous because of her quirk. And yet someone was still missing. She sighed, walking away after her match in the sports festival. She had dejected eyes, not really focused on where she was going. Until she bumped into him. Apologies, I wasn't looking, her eyes widened before softening realizing who it was. She clenched her fist over her bosom, letting her guard down. Oh, Izuku, I didn't, I wasn't, I don't even know what I was doing out there. She instinctively lifted her head at an angle, leaning towards him, letting him inspect her injuries, like always. This would be her constellation, a moment with him. Except he didn't do that. Her eyes slowly fluttered open, wondering why. He fixed the loose strand of hair she always failed to, and kissed her forehead. You were great, Momo. Her onyx kitten eyes were wide to his affection. They glistened before bubbling up. She didn't hesitate to bury her face into the fabric of his shirt, letting out her frustrations. Izuku. Thus cementing the roundabout romance of an elegant heroine and noble delinquent. It was the end of the first round of the sports festival. Izuku let Momo shed her insecurities on his uniform until she was satisfied. Sorry, I shouldn't have stained it. You have your match with Todoroki coming up. And he said it to her. You're more important than that. Her eyes widened and welled up, she was about to cry again before stopping herself. He believed she could be strong, and that's all she needed. She straightened herself out and wiped her own tears away. He didn't need to say anything, the comfort was already there. He left getting ready to fight Shadow Todoroki in the second round. He came across Shinso in the hall. Yo. Yo. It was the first round, and the only two who made it from general studies through the first two sections of the festival were Izuku and Shinso. Both of them displayed their skills throughout the festival. And fate would conspire to put them together in the first match. One would expect that it would be Izuku's complete victory, and yet, his rough nature had rubbed off on Shinso, meaning he wasn't afraid to exchange blows with his friend. It was a display that let Shinso show his heroic nature. At the last encounter Shinso asked a question he knew Midoriya would answer. Tell me, why did you want to be my friend? Because you're a genuine human being. And just, as Izuku said during their first conversation, he punched him just before Shinso activated his quirk. At that moment, Hitashi wasn't affected by Izuku's fist, but by his words. He was sent crashing yet he didn't feel it. He rolled up to his knees, holding his gut, staring at Izuku, realizing that his quirk worked. Walk out. Shinso clenched his eyes shut. He couldn't feel bad. He had to take this opportunity, it was the only one he would get. Hitashi Shinso is out of bounds, Izuku Midoriya is the winner. Midnight proclaimed. Nani Hitashi glanced down at where he was. His eyes narrowed, his leg had crossed the out-of-bounds line. He realized he lost with a sigh, releasing his quirk before Izuku could walk out. They both stared at each other before breaking into a grin. Show the hero course. Shinso rooted for him in his own way. I'm going to show Iri. Izuku's one and only reason to win the sports festival was for her to realize she was in safe hands now. That he was strong enough. There he is. 
The little girl was in the stands watching with Tinko, Torino, and Toshinori. Yeah, that's your big brother, Izuku. Tenko, of course, was the one holding her up on his lap. Iri glanced around at the lively crowd, they were all excited and erupted in cheer as both Izuku and Todoroki made their way to the platform. She didn't really get it, but she waved her arms around trying to cheer like them. Izuku and Shadow stared at each other. So is it true, your father is all might? That doesn't matter. Todoroki clenched his fist. Of course it does. Letting his eyes flow out. I'll beat the son of the world's greatest hero without using the number two hero's fire quirk. He declared. This doesn't involve me. Izuku easily dodged a row of eyes. Someone like you would never understand. Todoroki shot out another row of eyes. Izuku understood its density and freezing properties after seeing it for the first time. He jumped, landing after a flipping twist for momentum, sliding over the already solidified ice, zeroing in on Todoroki. Izuku leapt off the ice, charging at him. Todoroki created a wall of ice to protect him. It shattered instantly by a barrage of blows. Izuku broke through and delivered a swift impact into his gut, launching him. Todoroki created a blockade of ice behind him to stop himself from going out of bounds. He tried to take in a breath, but couldn't. It feels like my stomach caved in after his punch. How is he this ridiculously strong? Todoroki tried to straighten out his body, but staggered as Midori approached. His presence it's the same as All Might's. Shadow, what are you doing? You can incinerate him easily with fire. Endeavor, the number two hero had marched down the aisle, wanting to see his son surpass All Might's newly revealed son. To think that bastard All Might had a son, my shadow will surpass your son, All Might. Ashinori was in his weak state next to his family simply looking like another fan, so he wasn't noticed. He was staring at Endeavor before turning his attention back down to the fight unfolding between their children. The students of UA were trying to root for Todoroki, but Endeavor's appearance had mucked the mood. Kaminari and Mineta were still cheering hard though, wanting that delinquent to lose, their cheers eventually got others to join them. Honestly, nobody wanted a delinquent to win, especially during a festival meant for the heroes in training. Tenko glanced around slightly annoyed by the mood, doing his best not to scratch his itches, in front of Eerie. Momo had her index finger curled around her lip, honestly conflicted, she felt it was only right to root for your fellow classmate, especially a strong presence like Todoroki, but it's Izuku. Her lips parted before she captured her own courage and began to cheer for him. You can do it, Izuku. Her class gave her a look, but she ignored it. I will believe in you. You believe in me. Yet no matter how the crowd cheered, the only men that mattered were the two in a fight against each other. Shadow had his eyes shadowed. Izuku didn't want to see it, but he did, and gritted his teeth, shadowing his own eyes before turning to Endeavor, because for some reason he was still running his mouth. Shut up. You're annoying me Izuku Midoriya was glaring at Enji Todoroki, silencing the whole crowd. Wait, did he just? Most of class 1A and the crowd were shocked, but not Enko, Torino, Tashinori, and for some reason neither was Momo. I knew he would stick up for Todoroki. She giggled to herself. And eerie, she had her eyes wide. To her, Izuku Midori always seemed to shine so bright, like her own light in the tunnel. What did you say? Endeavor was burning the rails he was holding on to. How dare you act high and mighty. Mighty, like my old man. Izuku did intend that pun, but it wasn't simply to anger Enji, he was purposely deflecting the attention off Shadow to himself, both from Endeavor and the crowd. You disrespectful brat. All Might must be a lousy father. The rails have melted away by now. You just need to be disciplined, like Shadow beginning to aim his flames at Izuku. Endeavor, if you continue this action, it will be seen as interference and Todoroki will be disqualified. The same goes for you Midoriya, for provoking it. Midnight ruled, although she only added the Midoriya part because she, along with other heroes who worked with Endeavor, knew how brutal he could and would be. It was for Midoriya's safety. But the fact that Endeavor, the number two hero, was about to attack a student at the sports festival was revealed to the world. It was Izuku's victory without lifting a finger. I will do this with my own power. Todoroki, at that moment, wanted to prove this to nobody, but himself and his mother. His eyes erupted into a massive glacier almost enveloping the entire stadium. Izuku's eyes widened. I was too distracted he tried to jump and escape, but it caught his shoes. Boy, that's my favorite pair. Izuku was actually a bit agitated. Then Ko sweat dropped, he knew his brother usually only lost his cool when someone messed with his red shoes. He sighed. The moron calls them iconic. Izuku Midoriya has been immobilized, Shadow Todoroki is the I never said I lost. Midoriya was firmly planted diagonally on the glacier with his arms crossed. Are you saying you can continue? Midnight needed clarification. Izuku simply nodded and Midnight let the match continue. He rolled and closed his eyes as he uncrossed his arms. I could just slip my feet out of my shoes and get out, but he folded his hand into a fist and raised it back. 
I guess it can't be helped, is he? Is he seriously planning on punching his way out the crowd was bewildered and were ready to mock his failure. Aura. Smashing a hole into the ice, freeing himself. He said Aura. Aura, 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 Aura. Aura. He continued his barrage of punches, shattering all of it. He said it again and broke the entire thing into pieces. The crowd was left awed by the spectacular feat as the ice scattered around like soft petals. Momo Yeoi Rozu held out her hand catching one for herself, she held it dearly, with both hands to her bosom letting it melt there. Izuku Midoriya's family all had a warm smile. Tashinori himself was quite proud. His actions, no matter how rough at first, are always out of kindness and blossom into such beauty. And the one captivated the most was Todoroki himself. Because the anger that was released as ice was crafted into gentle flakes, falling around him. He glanced at his own hands. If my ice can be that then it was small and with a weak flicker, but for a moment there was an ember swirling with a drop of ice. Izuku landed with a stern stance, standing in front of him. Shouto glanced up away from his hands at Izuku with confused eyes. Why do I feel this? What is it? His eyes were shadowed as he replied to the internal conflict in Todoroki's eyes. It's your quirk's potential. By quirk it was a struggle, but he gulped down and clenched his eyes. It split the air as he activated both his fire and ice. The crowd's cheer drowned out Endeavor's laughter of glee. The ice and fire swirled into a scorching winter, towering over them in the arena, but Izuku stood, facing it unfazed. His eyes were shadowed, but he had a smirk with his fist shut. I'm going to be a hero. Todoroki proudly declared to Izuku before attacking with all the energy he had built up. And the distorted sound erupted as Izuku activated it. Precision incarnate. It was a massive explosion and the crowd couldn't tell what was going on. Everyone held their breath as the smoke cleared. Izuku Midoriya had his fist embedded into Shadow Todoroki's gut, with Shadow not able to catch his breath, clawing at Izuku as he tried to remain standing, his body basically going limp yet forcing itself on Izuku. Midoriya was staring up at him as he clung to his consciousness. Todoroki your quirk was beautiful. But it wasn't that rough voice, it was the soft lullaby he used to comfort Yeri. His eyes widened as if not knowing he was waiting for those words before ultimately passing out. But Izuku didn't let him fall harshly, he caught him and laid him down gently, as if putting a child to bed. The crowd watched on in silence, most completely stunned that Todoroki lost after such a display of strength, but there were a few who saw through the intense conflict, seeing Izuku's kind act. One of them was Shinso, recalling that he used that same kindness on Iri. Tashinori was more than proud of his son today and wouldn't care if he won or lost the tournament because he more than showed his worth to everyone. Tenko just had a smile because Eerie had ignored the fight to play with the falling eyes and he just thought that it was adorable. Momo had a content sigh at the outcome because it looked like Todoroki had gained more through his defeat than through a victory. And to be honest with herself she was relieved that Izuku wasn't harmed facing that enormous amount of power. Yet, as it finished Momo couldn't help but be moved by Izuku's final gesture. Midnight was also one of them who saw she was actually the closest to it. Izuku Midoriya is the winner. She had wide eyes of disbelief because he has more compassion than anyone in the hero course. What is that student? The crowd didn't know whether to cheer or boo, it was a confused mixture of both. Izuku left the arena with shadowed eyes, not caring for the crowd's opinion. But there was one person's reaction he wanted to see. He glanced up at Endeavor and was satisfied with the expression of loss and confusion. Eku ran into Kakin in the hall. Boy, you better make it to the finals. I'm finally going to show you that I'm the better one, got it. Kakin barked, but Izuku ignored him, as if he was an angry chihuahua. Don't ignore me asshole. Someone else came and interrupted him. Oh, Izuku I'm so glad I caught you. She always rushed to approach him, but always timidly slowed down as she reached him. I was wondering if you wanted to watch the matches together. She was a blushing mess like usual, but there was a new confidence radiating around her because of him. She glanced at him while fixing the loose strand of hair. I was going to look for you. He simply admitted. Oh. She shyly looked down because of his outright statement. Both of them started to walk side by side. Hakan could only look on with blank shark eyes. Quit ignoring me. But he ultimately was. Izuku and Momo spent the rest of that round of the tournament sitting together, simply enjoying each other's company. It's nothing special, but it doesn't need to be because when I'm with him, I'm the one that feels special. Izuku was standing in front of Tenya, both of them in the middle of the ring. Midnight glanced at Izuku one more time before raising her hand and starting the match. As one A's class president, I cannot in good conscience let someone like you advance to the finals. Iida didn't hesitate to use his speed and attacked Izuku. He delivered a roundhouse kick aiming for his head, wanting to finish it one blow. He missed. What, but? Even the crowd was confused because to everyone, it looked like Izuku didn't even move. 
Benya was in shock, Izuku was glaring at him after having dodged a high-speed kick, as if it was an illusion. Your speed isn't a variable to me. Was all he said before blasting Tenya with a kick of his own. Except it happened in the blink of an eye. It wasn't that it was faster than Iida's kick, it was that Izuku's kick, like his punches, could be instantaneous. But how could one ever realize that with the naked eye? What was Izuku's ability? This is a question that his father and grandfather have discussed at great length, but they could never come to any conclusive conclusion. He coughed out spit. He tried to recover, but ended up tumbling and scraping himself up. He got up to one knee with wide eyes. Is he faster than me? But my quirk is speed. He's saying he doesn't even recognize it as fast. That's ridiculous. Although I have to admit that I was underestimating him. He was able to beat Todoroki after all, a feat that should be impossible for anyone quirkless. That's it, no matter what Izuku Midoriya has a quirk. With that knowledge he stood back up, facing Midoriya. He harshly pointed at him, as his glasses glared. I figured out your trick. This match is over. Izuku had one hand crossed across his torso, and the other one had its elbow placed on his forearm, holding his hand to his chin, and his fingers over his lips. He looked bored, except he wasn't. He was mumbling to himself, as he analyzed all the information on Iida simply from his first attack. A distinguishing character trait forever imbued within Izuku Midoriya. Hey are you listening, I said this match has already been won by me. I heard you. It's just irrelevant. How dare you simply set me aside. I am the proud younger brother of Ingenium, and I won't stand for this, especially from a delinquent in general studies. Iida revved his engine and blasted off towards Izuku. Even if you have a quirk, I can defeat you. Izuku remained in his pose thinking about Iida's plan of attack. He wouldn't attack directly like he did earlier, if he does this match is over. Then you jumped before reaching him and did a front flip, planning to drop his leg on him with a heavy kick. Izuku's eyes narrowed. That doesn't make sense. But still dodged it with his illusionary speed. Except Tenya was hoping for that. Instead of landing on his feet, Tenya continued the flip into a handstand behind Izuku, completely open to attack. I knew it. It's not that my kicks go through you, it's that you dodge it in a way that looks like you never moved, even though you definitely did. Recipro, burst. Iida went into overdrive and kicked his leg out like a tornado, nailing Izuku in the side. Crack. That's the first real hit anyone has landed on Midoriya. Present Mick hyped over the announcements. The people cheered with him, some from the excitement, others because Izuku was being sent out of the arena and was going to lose. He gritted his teeth enduring the pain as he was sent flying. He was right, he figured out my dodging trick. I thought he meant it doesn't matter, at this rate I'm going to lose. I only did it against Todoroki because I was sure no one would be able to see it, but now his hesitation lifted when his eyes caught both Eerie and Momo staring at him with worry. His eyes shadowed. Precision incarnate. Before going out of bounds Izuku had stopped himself. And no one could believe it or figure out how he did. Tenya was staring with shock and defeat because he knew he lost as his special move came to an end. Midnight and had wide vivid eyes. And the crowd was in stunned silence. Izuku Midoriya had pierced the cement of the arena with only his fingers, doing a one-handed handstand just before going out of bounds. He then recovered and began his walk back to Iida. That was close. Iida had denial etched in his face as he saw and felt Izuku's presence approaching him. He began to bark out anything he could to stop him from getting closer because to Iida this was impossible. He's just some punk that only entered this school because of all might. I'm a proud member of the Iida household. I studied and trained my absolute best so why? Why is someone like you able to surpass me? Although no one in the crowd would outright state agreement with Iida's desperate words, some of them, if not most, agreed quietly, especially the students of UA. They didn't want the delinquent to tarnish the school's prestige. Izuku quietly finished his walk to Iida standing in front of him, ready to end the match with a simple knockout blow. He ignored Iida's words. Or at least the ones he could. Your mother must be ashamed of having had you for a son. Tenko's eyes broke wide. He snapped to All Might. Oi, Pops. I'm already on it. Not hesitating to blast into the ring. Izuku's eyes were livid with the evoked emerald. Instead of the knockout blow, he raised his fist up into a knife hand with the purpose of slashing straight down into Iida, adjusting his footwork before striking. Midnight shivered from the sudden intense killer aura exploding out of Midoriya. She instinctively prepared to rip her sleeve and use her quirk, except he had already intervened. Is he really the same person who fought Todoroki? All Might had caught his wrist. What a valiant effort by these two, you both should be proud. He had stopped Izuku's raised arm, making it look like he was declaring him the winner. Then he raised Iida's arm too. He used his charisma to make it seem like it was a respectful bout, with Midoriya as the winner. Izuku had his eyes shadowed. What would you have said to Iri if she saw you do that? Were all might stern words to his son. Izuku winced with a caught up throat. 
he pulled his hand away from All Might leaving the arena. His eyes were still shadowed, but now for other reasons. She went to look for him, as usual. Unfortunately this time it wasn't as simple. As Momo made her way through the hall she ran into Ida. Um, that was a great effort, everyone is really proud of you. Are you? His dejected expression was basking in negative mental traps. What are talking about, of course, I am, I'm the vice. Or are you more happy for that damn Midoriya? Momo gasped, shocked, not believing his attitude. Ida, pardon. Everyone knows how friendly you two are. As the vice president you shouldn't be associated with some like that, especially considering your status outside of school. It's for your own good. Ida walked past her before saying, in the last moment of the match, all I saw in front of me was a monster. And he left. Momo clenched her fists so tight her knuckles were white. That's that's not her lips trembled, and her cheeks bloomed like cherry petals. She had also experienced that intense dangerous aura emitting from him. Could her noble dream actually be a requiem for a nightmare? If that could be true then why does it only excite me? Now, let's rewind the clock a little, as the gears of fate had already turned a fair amount. Aichisaki had acted quickly with the newfound growth he received from the confrontation with Izuku Midoriya. He effectively moved his group away from its current location, while erasing the members who caused this failure. It was a fair amount. After establishing his new headquarters, he made plans to meet the League of Villains and the hero killer Stain. The events of the meeting itself are still unknown. On the other side of society, the heroes were acting fast, as well. The detailed sketch of overhaul that Izuku had drawn had made its way to Night Eye's agency. He was also informed of the little girl saved by All Might's son. It was hard to understand Night Eye's feelings towards the unfolding events. It was, as if fate itself was bringing All Might back into his life, no, to think like that was naive to Night Eye, to him All Might and his fate were always intertwined. It's either this year or the next where I saw the death of a hero. Fate itself would force her Night Eye and All Might to confront this, together. Back to the present time. Both Kai Chisaki and Sir Night Eye were watching the sports festival, focused on the individual that had forcibly linked himself to them, Izuku Midoriya. Regarding the student, Momo was still looking for him. The festival was in the middle of a break before the final started. A huge monitor had graphics of Midoriya versus Bakugo. The crowd was excited about the upcoming match, because both students had shown such a raw display of power. Anticipation was high, especially with the conveniently leaked rumor of those two being childhood friends turned rivals, but mom didn't care for that. She cared about the conflicted expression Izuku had after his match with Ida. She had reached the prep room that was assigned to him before the match started. She took in a breath before knocking. There was no response. She grabbed the doorknob and began to turn it slowly. Izuku, it's me. She announced, as she made her way in, as politely as possible. He was sitting on a chair with his notebook on the table, in deep thought. She realized he didn't hear her because he had his headphones in his ears. Upon seeing her, he took them off, but the music was at max volume and played loud enough in the background. Oh, sorry, I can leave if you want. His eyes were shadowed, but he spoke. Stay. But it wasn't demanding. To her, it was a simple want of company and maybe comfort. Okay. She squealed. She mentally slapped herself for sounding too excited. She took the seat next to him and smiled, scooting it closer to him. If All Might hadn't stopped me then you, Aniri would have seen that. He gritted his teeth angry at himself. Oh, Izuku please don't worry about that, no one got hurt, so everything is fine, right? She had instinctively placed her hand over his bicep and rubbed his arm, reassuring him. Her fingers might have squeezed on his muscle a little, but that was beside the point, at least she kept trying to tell herself that. You're too sweet, Momo. Oh, really, you think so? How flattering. I can usually keep my cool during most situations, but when he said that, I couldn't stop myself, I didn't want to stop myself. I knew it was wrong, but it wasn't until what All Might said that I realized how childish I was being. It pisses me off. He realized he was doing his iconic rambling in front of someone and stopped with wide eyes before hiding them and going back to his stoic nature. How did she? I haven't done that in front of someone since I was a child. Momo ignored the carnal desire she grew from his admitted vicious action. She had to because, Izuku. That's the longest you ever talked to me. She had her hands cupped around her cheeks, trying to push down her steaming cheeks. He didn't let her hear his gasp. I see. Keeping his hard demeanor. Momo pouted and dropped herself on the table like a child throwing a tantrum. Aw, oh, Izuku was talking. I want him back. He was hiding a sweat drop as he had shadowed eyes, seeing her being stubborn. Cute. She stopped just as quickly as she started. She straightened herself up, facing him, her loose strand of hair was flowing elegantly as she broke into a closed eye to the grin, tilting her head. But quiet Izuku is really protective, nah. He turned to her voice, facing her as well. And for the first time since she entered his room, his eyes weren't shadowed. 
They were clear to her, and they were enamored with emeralds. Izuku, do you think I can? Her voice left, as she leaned closer to him. She gulped, as she reached for his shirt, pulling it up. Her heart was beating because he wasn't stopping her, but she continued because she really wanted to do this for him. She stopped at his ribs, her hand traced it. He held back a wince, but she could see his pain. Over his ribs was a huge purple and red splotch of a bruise. This is where he kicked you. You didn't go to recover, did you? At least let me treat it. Momo, she placed her finger to his lips. He grew wide eyes of surprise, no one has ever dared to do that to him. I won't hear any objections. You get to worry about me. She had already had a medical kit ready, determined to take care of him. He let himself be treated, staring at her expression. Her eyebrows were knitted together, her eyes were focused, and she was subconsciously biting her lower lip, in worry, trying her best not to hurt him. And there. She said, as she finished. He turned his head to the side, but said it. Bossy Momo is pretty amazing. Hmm? Her ears perked, and she stared up at his face, taken aback by his words. A delicate Momo is precious to me too. Their eyes were shadowed, as their faces lingered closer and closer together. He held her cheek, rubbing his thumb over her rose-tinted porcelain cheekbone, with gentle protection. Oh, Izuku. She whispered in a fragile moan, their lips tenderly embracing. Eraserhead and present Mick were in the announcer's booth, looking down at the stage, as they began to prepare for the match. They had their microphones off so no one could hear them. Boy, I heard that they're pressuring Midnight into giving the victory to Bakugo. The higher-ups don't want the world to see a delinquent win the sports festival, even if he is All Might's kid. I heard. They say it will be a mockery to the hero society. In a school meant to raise heroes, if the best they could produce is some delinquent, UA would be seen as a joke, not to mention a lot of students already don't like him. But this all depends on Bakugo's skill. If he can't at least give a convincing performance then if Midnight gives him the victory, the sports festival will lose its merit. Midoriya is too much of an enigma. Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo were standing in the ring. The crowd was roaring. Midnight glanced at both of them, staring at Midoriya a little bit more than usual. Who is he going to be, the gentle person that fought Todoroki or that brutal foe that wanted to end Iida? No matter what, I can't let him win this. She hesitated, but started the match, to the deafening cheers of the crowd. Here I come, Deku. Kakin didn't hesitate to blast towards him. The smoke trailed him like a tracer throughout the match. I'll prove it in front of the world. I have always been better than you. Akin, remember that day you fell into the river. Izuku had a calm expression with his shadowed eyes. He wasn't even attempting to strike a pose. Those words caused him to trip up into a flashback, scraping the ground, before recovering, wiping his mouth. What did you say? Recalling the hand Deku reached out to him, but he refused to recall the walk back home. Akin, to me, you're still that kid. His fists weren't clenched, his body wasn't preparing for a fight. Fuck you, Deku. No matter how quiet you pretend to be, you always have something to say. Speeding towards him. He instinctively punched out with his right hand. Just like when they were kids. I wanted to help you. Izuku also instinctively dodged it like always. It was the subtle start to their dance. He punched with his left arm, trying to get inside Kakin's guard. I didn't need it. Bakugo turned his wrist and exploded into a spin, easily dodging. He used his momentum and attempted to hit him with a back elbow. But just like always Izuku blocked it with his forearm. That's what you always say. Deku, getting irritated by Kakin's usual headstrong attitude, punched, but Kakin caught it with his hand, attempting to explode it. Deku raised his knee into Kakin's wrist, breaking his hold. It was always in that moment where Izuku did his signature blow to the chest, launching Kakin. Before he crashed, he used his quirk to do an aerial recovery, launching himself back at Izuku. Darn it, Deku. Like always. The entire crowd was cheering Kakin on. Momo glanced around, having sat with her class, she saw them all cheering for him, as well. But that's to be expected, Bakugo is the best in our class, and Izuku as well Izuku, who would root for him other than me in this class. Yet, as she glanced around she saw someone in her class with a focused expression not cheering with them. She decided to move and sit with him, despite the protest of Kaminari who was sitting next to her, obviously trying to make a move. Unfortunately for him, Izuku saw him hitting on his Momo, but that distraction gave Bakugo a clean hit, blowing off a part of Izuku's shirt. Fortunately for Momo, the destroyed uniform revealed Izuku's abs. Never mind that. I should be cheering him on and joining like-minded people. She nodded to herself as she made her way to her destination. She recompassed like usual and spoke to him. Todoroki, do you mind if I sit with you? I'm glad you're alright. To Momo, it actually looked like he was rooting for Izuku, because every time he landed a hit, Todoroki got wide eyes, and whenever he was hit, Todoroki's eyes narrowed. Not at all. Keeping his eyes on the match. Yeoi Rozu, you're close to Midoriya, right? Never breaking contact with the flow of battle. 
What makes you say that? I mean I do know him, and I call him by his name, but who doesn't? Even if she knew that wasn't true, everyone else would be terrified of trying to do that. Oh, that was the perfect day thinking of when they both started being close. It happened the day after the USJ event. Momo herself was surprised because, as already known, in the morning, as she looked for him, worried for his sake, yet, he was the one checking on her. Now that wasn't the surprising part of the day, the surprise was after school. On the front steps of school where she had introduced herself, he was waiting for her. And ever since that day, he has taken her home. He ruined her daydream memory with a straight face, still focused on the match, Yeoi Rozu, are you dumb? She shot back with shark eyes, I'm flustered and enamored. Seriously you're as dense as ice. After she calmed down she apologized for her outburst and then restructured her statement. Actually Todoroki I do know Izuku, why do you ask? Do you know if he has a bro? That's what this is about. And it's Shinso. Please like they're even bros. I think I have a better chance. I should probably buy him flowers. Wait, you know him, what does Midoriya like? Don't you dare try to have a courtship with my Izuku. And again she apologized for her outburst, but now she was sure Todoroki was rooting for him. She herself went back to focusing on the match. Eku and Kaken both had received damage. They had locked hands, the Kugos were closed with Midoriya clasping them, not letting him use his quirk. Both had their foreheads pressed together with gritted teeth, until Kaken broke into a smirk. Deku, I already know your weakness. It's your pathetic stamina, that's why you cut every fight, as short as possible. What? Izuku was actually caught off guard by his statement. He pulled back before slamming Deku's head with his own in a bloody headbutt that everyone winced at. Kaken ignored the pain, he used all of his focus to place both his palms on Izuku's torso. Die. He used a maximum attack, blasting Izuku away. The massive explosion engulfed the stage. They had to wait for the smoke to clear. His body was on the ground. Midnight's arm was twitching, wanting to get this over with and declare Bakugo the winner. But she couldn't because his silhouette was rising through the smoke. His uniform was smoking, but never fell off, the only thing the tattered uniform did was exude his intimidating aura after taking a point-blank explosion. The entire crowd was silent as it cleared because other than some blood and bruises, he was completely fine. Sorry, Kaken, I let my guard down after you said that. It was too ridiculous. Izuku's eyes were hidden, but he had a smirk. What did you say? Bakugo was ready to explode. I used my strongest attack and he's still in the ring impossible. Izuku's smirk returned to its stoic nature. His hard glare got the attention. I keep fights short because otherwise, they become too brutal. You can't be serious, young Midoriya, you're going to take the sports festival seriously. If anything we should be laying low, especially for Eerie's sake. Besides, this is an event meant to celebrate the newly rising heroes. You, yourself have admitted to not liking involving yourself in those things. If someone like you were to attend it All Might was in a pinch, his parental side wanted his son to compete and even win, but his hero side knew the repercussions of a delinquent entering, with a very likely chance of winning the festival. They were arguing in the dining area, as Eerie and Tinko were drawing in a coloring book, like always he was doing his best to put a smile on her face. So you want us to hide? Do you want a little girl that was kept hidden to keep on hiding? Eerie deserves to enjoy her life, she deserves a childhood. Izuku had his eyes shadowed. I'm going to win and show her that she doesn't have to be scared. I'm going to announce to the world that I am here. Young Midoriya, All Might was staring at the unfolding fight. It's the deciding moment. He wanted to think of the outcome if Izuku won, but he could only picture the sorrow-stained eyes of a little girl that didn't know how to smile. He clenched his fists only able to let fate play out. Brittle. Quit trying to act so cool. Kakin's anger had blown off the lid as he rocketed to him with his quirk. Izuku's eyes were shadowed. He only needed a 1-2 sprint before blasting straight through Bakugou, throttling him with a clothesline. He flipped in mid-air before crashing face first, tumbling hard and scraping himself up. He instinctively blasted to his feet, but Izuku was already relentlessly attacking him. Bakugo did his best to dodge and block as they exchanged blows, but it was apparent that he was getting overwhelmed by Midoriya's strength and speed. The hard open palm to Bakugo's ear caused his eardrum to burst and ring as he lost his balance, so when he tried to hit him with an explosion, Izuku easily dodged. With Katsuki's hand extended, Izuku used that moment to interlock his fingers with Katsuki's before doing a front flip over him with their hands locked, causing Bakugo's wrist to snap back, almost breaking off, being rendered useless. Bakugo gritted in pain. He swiped out an explosion with his good arm as he turned around, hoping to get Deku, but all he did was blind himself in the smoke. Izuku erupted with a torque-fueled arm, impaling Katsuki in the gut. He coughed with wide eyes as he fell to his hands and knees. What? Every time we fraud I always had the advantage, so how? How? 
He didn't have time to think because his red shoe was already on top of the back of his head. What? Not able to react to it. Izuku curb stomped Katsuki's face in, breaking the cement, with the rest of his body flailing upward from the sheer force. He broke his nose and a few front teeth. At this point, the cheer of the crowd had vanished. Instead, they were forced to look on, as the last remaining student in the hero course was easily dismantled and beaten down into a puddle of his own blood. Midoriya let up for a moment. He glanced at midnight, waiting for her to call it. She caught his hard eyes and froze. She knew Bakugo couldn't win at this point, nor make it believable, but I've been pressured into ensuring a hero student's victory. Boy. Izuku had a hard glare, precisely analyzing her facial expressions through her thought process. Her eyes widened because he was looking at her, as if aware. But he stood up. Boy Deku, you call that brutal some blood spilling out of my face. Don't make me laugh he tried to mock, but his body was wobbling on the verge of collapsing, his eyes threatening to close. He ignored him, keeping his eyes on midnight. He can't even continue. How can a hero school not even care about their students' health? Like hell, I can't. Screw you Deku, I don't need you protecting me. He stumbled before throwing his fist, trying to use an explosion, but it was a dud, and Deku simply stepped back letting Kakin fall. Even the crowd knew it was over, but Midnight refused to call it because Bakugo kept getting back to his feet. It was hard to watch for most. His fists were clenched with anger. He glanced at Midnight one more time before turning to Bakugo, who was struggling to get up. Her eyes were wide because the result would be her fault. Except, to everyone's surprise, there was simply a kind hand reaching out to Bakugo like when they were kids. Deku. Mon Kakin. It was probably because he wasn't in the right headspace after being beat down, but Kakin took it, even with a small smile on his face. I can walk fine, it was just a bump. I know, but I still want to. He helped Kakin to his feet and draped his arm over his shoulders as he guided them out of the arena. I'm still gonna kick your ass. He mumbled as blood spilled from his mouth. I know Kakin. And even though his eyes remained shadowed, his voice held that rare softness. Midnight and the crowd were left speechless. Only the sounds of them trudging off the arena were heard. Hitsuki Bakugu is the winner. Midnight forced herself to announce it through a shaking voice, ashamed of herself. There were no boos and no cheers. Only a cluster of confused mumbling. Even though Izuku wasn't declared the winner he had a smirk. He had led the barely conscious Bakugu to a taxi that was already waiting for them with Shinso leaning on it. He also had a smirk seeing Izuku. It happened just like you said, they weren't going to give you the victory, no matter how obvious. Yeah, but if the first place winner can't accept the reward, then it goes to the runner-up. Shinso chuckled. They stack the odds, and you just completely flip the table on them. Don't worry Kakin, we're getting you to a hospital. As he laid him on the back seats. The taxi driver was under Shinso's brainwash, and, as soon as he hit the roof twice, the car left to deliver Bakugu to the hospital. They both smirked to each other. Showtime. As expected the personnel in the back were panicking because no one could find Bakugo. The plan was for the recovery girl to heal him quickly and start the ceremony. When asked about his disappearance Izuku simply said that the medical staff had taken him away, shrugging off the obvious blame. And the festival ended with Izuku awarded first place. Is there anything you would like to say? Midnight placed a microphone to his lips as she did her best not to squirm in Izuku's presence. She honestly didn't know if she was terrified or enticed by his actions throughout the festival. Izuku Midoriya was glaring at the camera aimed at him. No, he was glaring at the other side of the screen. Kai Chisaki was glaring back. Only the both of them knew they were staring at each other. And he only said one thing to him. I'm not going to stop chasing you until I've kicked your goddamn ass. The students of class 1 were all at the train station, talking together before each of them went off to their internship. Bakuga wasn't there, and neither was Kaminari, uh, yeah Izuku was tired of him hitting on Momo, to say the least. And, as a class, they were avoiding two people. Momo, but only because of who was with her, Izuku. Momo didn't mind though she was only excited for her internship. Oh, Izuku, I still can't believe you got the Lunar Bunny Mirko to train me for the week. It's limited time so she's going to cram a lot into you. Be careful. I'll do my best. She pumped herself up, raising an arm to her face with a determined grin as she boarded the train. Izuku did his best to warn her, but it seemed his message didn't get through to her. As he walked away from the platform it looked like he had shadowed eyes from his scowl, but it was actually due to him not trying to let his expression falter, because, excited Momo is too cute, but I'm also worried. Izuku had ditched, but Shinso wasn't with him because Azawa wanted to talk to him. He had a feeling Shinso was finally getting a chance to be a hero. He decided to go back home cause technically it was still UA. He entered the dorm's living quarters as a student playing video games with Eri and Tenko while talking to Gran Torino. Gramps, who is this? Walking to the three. Oh, this is the kid I decided to intern with. 
Hi, nice to meet you, I'm from class 1A. The names. Are you senile, the last person you trained was the old man. Gran Torino was rubbing his beard. I took liking to him. Ah thanks, I can't believe I'm going to be under the care of the same guy who trained All Might. He's my hero. Izuku Midoriya had shadowed eyes. I can tell. It was obvious from his hero suit, or lack thereof. Really, I guess it's pretty obvious, huh? He laughed off. Anyway, I guess I'll be living here for the next week, please take care of me. Oh, and the name's Koichi Haimawari, nice to meet you, although to be honest, you don't look so bad, even if you decimated my class at the sports festival, haha. <laughs> Genuinely not terrified of Izuku. Koichi tells him the best part, you're the hero's name. Tenko was chuckling, but Iri thought it was a cool name. Golden Wind. Bet out. Momo grunted, as she fell back. She was breathing heavily, she was scraped up, completely exhausted, but she forced herself back up. You know, I only agreed to this because he's basically my little brother. The rabbit barked. They were in the personal training room of Mirko. Aoi Rozu was panting with her hands on her knees. Her body was covered in sweat, she wiped her lips with her wrist. Izuku's sister. Talking in between breaths. The bunny crossed her arms under her bust. Ah, that's right, and if you ask me, I don't see what he sees in you. I saw your subpar performances at the festival. Momo dropped her head. That's exactly right. Mirko scoffed. But that's also why I'm here. If I can train under someone like you then, then she squeezed her eyes shut. Then I can protect Izuku when he needs it the most. She jumped, throwing her arms out from her excitement and determination. She realized what she had done, and quickly apologized, embarrassed. Sorry, I know a hero shouldn't act on their emotions. Screw that, excited Momo is the best. Mirko punched her fist into her palm, with hype. You wanna be strong, right? Break time's over. Let's get back to it. Yes, big sis Rumi. Now we must rewind back to the sports festival while Momo was tending to Izuku's wounds. Then Yuiida ran his hand back through his hair after blowing off some steam. He groaned, but admitted it. I was too harsh on Yeoi Rozu. Her personal friendships have nothing to do with school responsibilities. I just can't believe Midoriya's strength. It's illogical. Whenever he wanted to land a hit he did. No matter, I was disrespectful to him, as well, my frustrations and feelings got in the way. I'll make amends with those two. He was able to calm down and realize his mistake, and due to Iida's nature, he went to apologize straight away, like a robot having to complete a task. As he went looking for them he stumbled upon them leaving the room. He was about to walk straight to them until he noticed their body language as they adjusted their clothes. Yeoi Rozu was a blushing mess, keeping her eyes averted from Izuku, but she couldn't hold down the beaming smile. Midoriya hadn't changed as much, except his natural stoic expression had a layer of protective care. And they left, with her arm hugged around his bicep. They weren't simply just friends. And for some reason, this struck a chord inside Iida. First a sports festival, and now my vice president. Ring, 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 ring. He answered the phone with a sour greeting due to his mood. Then you it's your brother. They did something to him. And she told him. WH what? The Ida rushed to the hospital to see his brother. He busted into the room with concern. His brother was lying, paralyzed on the bed, staring out the window with an empty expression. He slowly turned to his little brother. They did it. They took my quirk. That was the day Tenya Iida swore revenge, sealing his confrontation with the hero killer Stain. Returning to the present, Gran Torino was talking to Izuku. Oh, and can you take Koichi out, he's got potential, but he's a little wet behind the ears. Izuku's regular scowl shifted a bit. Huh, well, you ditch anyway. Tenko figured it would be a good idea to give Iri a day out. Tenko had a smirk. You're the one that said Iri deserves a chance to live her childhood, I'm just trying to follow through. Izuku wanted to retort, but his brother was one of the few people who could beat him in an argument. That settles it. You three will be taking Iri out. Hooray. Koichi cheered. And that was all he contributed to the conversation. Come on Iri, let's get you ready. Okay. She had glanced around at all of them, as they talked about her with a curious expression, because she didn't know why they were so focused on her, but not in the way overhaul was. He was simply invested in her quirk, but these people were caring about her, as a person, as a child. They were at the door getting ready to leave. Gran Torino stopped them, oh, you two have your hero licenses on your right. Koichi is interning with us. Yup, always have it on me. Tenko showed him. So does Izuku even if he doesn't like to talk about it, don't worry grandpa. Just making sure, be safe. Koichi shifted his eyes between the conversation. Wait, what? You two are heroes. But Midoriya hates them doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Tenko simply smiled as they left for Eerie's adventure. Momo was beyond exhausted from her training, but Mirko was able to revitalize her with a few simple words. Come on we're going patrolling. As they headed for Hosu City.
In Hosu City, the events between Tenya Ieda and Stain were already occurring. As expected the young student was defeated and unable to move. Except instead of ending him like the other heroes, he was dragging him away. Ingenium's little brother, you bastard. Are you going to do what you did to him, to me steal my quirk? He cried, as he disappeared into the shadows. Izuku was walking ahead of them, as Yuri held Tenko's glove with Koichi walking beside them. So do you guys have hero names? Izuku doesn't. Tenko glanced down at Iri before staring up at the sky with a sad smile. But mine is Sky thinking of the picture of his grandmother floating amongst the clouds. Sky, huh, why go for that? It's the only thing my quirk can't destroy. Izuku's eyes were shadowed hearing the sorrowful voice of his brother. They had decided to take Yuri to the Kiyashi Ward shopping mall. It had a lot of quirk-based items and figured they could find something that could help explain Yuri's quirk or at the very least make sure she had fun. As they rode the train, Koichi asked Tenko more about their licenses as Izuku played on the phone with Yuri. Tenko explained that even though Izuku was seen as a bad apple more often than not the fights he would get himself wrapped up in would have a positive outcome for society and given All Might status, he was given one in secret, which is why he never gets jail time. So basically Midoriya just beats up criminals, and the cops handle the rest. That's the gist of it, on the other hand, I worked for mine I just didn't want to worry about him, while not being able to do anything, you know. Koichi wiped his eyes. Can you be my brother? Sure. When they arrived at the mall the first thing Koichi and Tenko decided to do with Hiri was play at the arcade. Izuku didn't care and simply followed, but he kept his eyes peeled, something felt wrong to him. Lately, villain activity has slowed down so why doesn't it feel any more peaceful? Overhaul, Stain, and All for One were all standing in front of Tenya who was strapped down to a chair with his mouth taped shut. He struggled and attempted to scream, but it was all in vain. This is perfect, you brought the one person who was able to successfully hurt Izuku Midoriya during the festival, not only that, he happens to be Ingenium's brother. All for One's voice, in a strange way, sounded as comforting as All Might's. Stain had his arms crossed, leaning on a wall, simply watching the process. Overhaul slipped off the glove. Izuku Midoriya, I can't thank you enough. Not only did I grow, but so did my quirk. He placed his hand on the distraught Ida who couldn't defend himself. Thanks to you, I learned to use my quirk to break down and rebuild someone's brain chemistry. Activating his quirk as he held Ida's head. That was the day Ingenium arose as the villain. The day Overhaul, All for One, and Stain, the hero killer, met was the day the world came to stop. Although all three were those of the ego and with their own goals, they united after coming to the conclusion that All Might and the Hero Society could not be overcome by a soul power. Overhaul introduced his project on quirk erasure bullets and his newfound ability to forcibly change people. All for one offered his resources, seeing it better to have the Yakuza on his side. And Stain, he was only enticed by the information All for One had on All Might and the secret of One for All. Izuku was sitting by a table, dotting in his notebook as he replayed with Tenko and Kachi. He was given information from Night Eye's agency. He found out Overhaul was the leader of a Yakuza and that their activities had been quiet as of late. That only bothered him because the League of Villains activity was rising in correlation to the decline and yet the hero killer was left undisturbed almost purposely. In his notebook, he had Overhaul, the hero killer, and the League of Villains separated in a triangle format with him, All Might, and Eerie in the middle. He glanced at Tenko, having a strange feeling, he wrote his name alongside his before stopping and scribbling it out. He connected the lines, the League and Hero Killer were interested in All Might, while Overhaul was interested in him and Eerie. And All Might was connected to Izuku and Eerie. Izuku's eyes widened as he had unknowingly connected the dots. They all have something to gain if they work together in attacking us. He just hoped Overhaul didn't realize it. But the memory of Overhaul thanking him for his growth after their confrontation was nagging at him. Izuku, I killed a zombie. Eerie had walked up to him and flat out stated, confused, as to whether or not that was an accomplishment. She tilted her head waiting for her big brother to tell her. Is that right? His little sister actually made him stutter. He rolled his eyes assuming this was because of Tenko. Em, Eerie did you have fun? I guess so. Then it was a good thing, okay. But let's find something else to play. He stood up and offered his hand, she took it and they walked around the arcade. He glanced across the mall at a bookstore. He planned to buy some books regarding quirks to help understand Eerie, but figured after they spent time at the arcade. This one, this one. Eerie tugged, getting his attention. He was a bit surprised at her excitement and let himself be dragged. It was a pony riding simulator. He smirked before placing the tokens and helping her up as the ride began. As Eerie enjoyed her pony ride, Midoriya's phone began to ring. He clicked on it and placed it to his ear. Oi, Izuku. Mirko barked into his ear. 
He only reacted by pulling his phone slightly away from his ear before putting it back. Rumi, how's mom doing? Mirko yelled something about how he should show concern for her too, but Izuku ignored it like usual. Actually, you can check on her, yourself, if you want. We're heading to Hosu. In the background, Izuku could hear Momo's blushing protest, yet also excited anticipation to patrol with him. Hosu? Her voice changed from a playful older sister type to serious. Ah, it's for the hero killer. That's where he's been most active. Tonight, I'm taking him down. I figured you would be interested. She had closed her eyes with knitted eyebrows before breaking. Okay, cards on the table, I feel like when it comes to matchups, you would be the best to take him out. The hero killer. Izuku thought of his notes. Actually, there's something I need to find out about him. I'll meet you at Hosu. Before hanging up he could hear Momo try to get in a goodbye before Mirko cut off the call. He found it odd that Rumi and Momo seemed to be getting along perfectly. After finishing his call, he waited for Eri's ride to end before picking her up and going to look for Tinko. He found him and Koichi carrying bags. Oi, Izuku, I bought some stuff for Eri and those books you were talking about. Tenko, you're a godsend, but something's come up, I'm headed to Hosu. Hosu? Don't tell me, the hero killer. Really, Izuku. We have enough on our plate. I know. But that's exactly why. I can't shake this feeling that things are snowballing, and confronting him could defuse it before it becomes too big. Tenko sighs, nodding his head to Koichi. There he goes again overthinking and analyzing a situation till it's done with. Fine, we'll take Yuri home. Wait, shouldn't I go with Midoriya? No, it's fine. Your assignment is to take care of Yuri. Izuku thanked his brother and said goodbye to Yuri, giving Koichi a nod. Yuri had confused glittering eyes, not aware she was feeling admiration. Why does he always leave? But she didn't say it in a sad way. It was a voice of awe, thinking that he was off to save someone the way he saved her. Although being a child she couldn't express the thought. Tenko had a small smile answering her question. Regardless of whether or not Izuku admitted it to himself. Because, he's a hero, the sun was setting. And Genium was perched on the ledge of a roof. The hero killer, Stain, was in a dark alley, stalking any unsuspecting prey. The group of Nomu, ready to be dispatched. There was a woman and a magician trailing Tenko, Eri, and Koichi. Momo and Mirko had made it to Hosu and were looking off into the distance, as if preparing for the long night ahead. Izuku was on the train, looking at the skyline. The closer he got the more his anxiety grew, yet he couldn't fathom why. It wasn't until he heard the heavy steps approaching that he began to understand. You're a hard one to get alone, oh, but now. Izuku kept his eyes on the window, staring at the reflection of a huge man, he was kept hidden by a large shroud. How long have you been keeping tabs on me? Since I heard you beat overhaul. I have to see for myself how strong you are. He threw off his shroud and revealed himself to be a former member of Overhaul's group. Kendo Rappa. Izuku Midoriya simply rolled his eyes before standing up and accepting the confrontation. The grief. Tenko was right, we do have too much on our plate. The sun was setting and the people were going on with their peaceful life. The bustling city was as loud as ever and for some reason that brought a sense of calm to everyone. The trains rolled along the tracks, whistling by. Except one train had a large commotion going on in one of the passenger cars. Everyone in it was at either end, trying not to get caught in the fight. Izuku Midoriya and Kendo Rappa were engaged in a barrage of fists, blasting away at each other. The shock waves have already shattered the windows. This must be convenient for you, finding me alone. Izuku instigated, trying to find out what he could about his new opponent. Have you heard of the Amur Tiger? They say it will see you multiple times as it stalks you, and the only time it lets you see it is when it goes for the kill. I see. Now arriving at Hosu. Hosu? Izuku was distracted by the intercom announcement and was caught by Rappa's fist, taking the blow into the gut, being launched, flying out of the opening doors, crashing into a vending machine. The bystanders who were going to take the train instead ran away in terror as Rappa made his way out, walking to Midoriya. Izuku was still embedded into the vending machine, not bothering to pull himself out yet, simply staring at the approaching monster in front of him. He had busted some cans open and they had soaked parts of his clothes. What annoyed him the most was that he could feel the sticky soda seeping into his favorite red shoes. TCH, come on. Rappa berated, outstretching his arms, wanting Izuku to come at him with everything he had. Izuku pulled himself out of it, staring at him intently. He couldn't get a red on his foe, there was no animosity in him, simply someone who wanted a good fight. Why would someone like you join Kai Chisaki? Rappa smirked under his mask. It's not like I care about him, in fact, I think he's more of a monster than me after finding out about that little girl. But I only have one rule, follow and challenge the strongest until you're the last one standing. Right or wrong is irrelevant to me. Little girl, you mean Eri? 
Izuku could only ponder what Rappa knew about Overhaul and Eerie, but his words did indicate one thing. Izuku didn't want to fight Rappa anymore. Not only that, Momo and Rumi are out looking for the hero killer, I have to join up with them. Yosh, I guess I only have one choice then. His eyes were shadowed. Huh? Yeah, that's it, bring it. Gearing himself up for Izuku's attack. You're the first guy I met that could ever keep up with my fists. Time to use my Gramp secret technique run away. Blink. Blink. Huh? Bunny ears. Wait, he's actually running away. Rappa was caught off guard by his sudden dash, leaving the scene. It took him a moment before he began to run after him. Come back here. He would have called him a coward, but Rappa could tell that Izuku was no such thing. That only wanted him to fight him more. It was during the chase, the Nomu attacks began. More problems. I have to contact Rumi and Momo. But then he actually took a glance around the city. The sun had set, but it was still bright because the city was in flames. The big muscular one was attacking someone who locked themselves in their car. Izuku didn't hesitate to blast it with a punch, causing it to stagger back. Izuku glanced at Rappa, who hadn't stopped following him. Boy, Rappa, take care of this guy, and I'll give you a fair fight later. Izuku yelled at him, as he kept running, pulling out his phone, dialing Mirko. Seriously, an all-out fight with you? Sure, you look busy anyways. Rappa agreed, as he leapt to the recovering Nomu, slamming his knuckles into its skull. Thanks. I'll find you later. He definitely would. He placed the phone to his ear waiting for a response. After a few rings, it went to voicemail. He grunted in growing worry before he called Momo. Izuku her voice was frantic. Momo, what's wrong? But before she could reply it sounded like the phone had fallen, only able to hear her background screams. Momo. Click. He didn't know where he was running, but he knew he was going to find them. Think, how does the hero killer act? Analyzing him, as he searched the city. Benko and Koichi were walking down the street heading to the UA Eerie was happily eating an ice cream cone they bought her, holding her big brother's hand. Her big brother, Tenko, kept glancing back. There were three following us, one of them must have gone after Izuku. No, it's more like that one was only targeting Izuku. This isn't good, I hope they would stop their pursuit as we got closer to home. Koichi snapped his eyes to Tenko. We're being followed. Off in the distance were two figures that kept themselves hidden, as best they could. He nodded. Don't look back and don't worry, it seems like they are done hiding and gonna go for the attack. That's even more of a reason to worry. Tenko nodded again. Here they come. Eerie, remember that game you played with Koichi? She glanced up at him confused. You mean, backpack loli? He smiled down at her. Exactly, we're going to play right now okay? Okay. Here, Koichi. On it. He strapped her to her back, and as soon as he finished, Tenko pushed him out of the way, jumping the opposite way. And they dodged just in time. The ground beneath them was reduced to rubble. Go, golden wind. Tenko yelled to Koichi, as he lunged at the assailant. Tenko couldn't get a good look at them because they were covered in a cloak. As Tenko reached them, they disappeared, leaping high into the sky. Tenko could only stare with eyes of disbelief. Boy, why the hell can you float like my grandmother? Now, we must examine the events that transpired with Mirko and Yayoi Rozu as Izuku was trying to contact them. They were patrolling the back alley streets, and it happened as soon as Mirko's phone rang. She took it out of her utility belt and went to answer it, but her arm was nicked by a blade. She had hopped away as soon as she noticed the shadow blurring past her, but it was too late. Nani Mirko couldn't move. She collapsed to the floor face first. Shit, I let my guard down. Who the hell called me anyways? Mirko Momo quickly looked around, trying to keep up with the scurrying figure, seeing it retreat into the shadows. Her phone began to ring, she pulled it out and saw that it was Izuku. She quickly went to answer it, heading to Mirko, but she kept her eye on the spot it lurked at. Izuku. Momo. What's wrong? But before she could reply the figure came flying at her. She created a shield, dropping her phone, as she cried out in a defensive clash. She faintly heard Izuku's voice calling for her before the line cut off. In the moment, she could see him clearly. It has to be him. The hero killer. Momo knitted her eyebrows together as her shield pressed against his blade. She glanced over at Mirko, checking on her. Stain, the hero killer, noticed her worry over her bunny hero. He decided to test her worth as a hero. He stepped up to her shield and leapt off it in a backflip, he angled himself above Rumi, aiming his sword down at her. Momo gasped out with fear. Until she bit her bottom lip, forcing herself to act. Izuku believes in me, and that's all I need. She threw out her hand and created a binding cloth. It flew and captured the hero killer's sword. She yanked, pulling his body away from Rumi. He grunted as he tumbled onto the ground, but he fixed his momentum and rolled upright. He gripped the cloth and pulled hard before Momo could let go, bringing her to him. You ended up saving her, but in exchange, it will end up costing you your life. 
He barked, having a dagger ready to stab her, as she came flying at him. It is noble, however, the mark of a true hero is to break out of any dire situation. Momo didn't reply, she was too scared to talk. But she was forced. I won't be overwhelmed again. Stain prepared his stab, and, as he attacked Momo twisted her body, but it wasn't to avoid, she had created objects aimed at Stain without him realizing, and had now positioned herself in striking distance. Bear traps five of them were flying out of her body towards Stain. One from each limb, and one from her chest. He deflected one with his sword, but another got the blade, ripping it off his hand. One stabbed into his elbow, causing him to drop his dagger. In a moment of panic, he rolled out of the way, dodging the other two. Momo landed in a rolling scrap, but ended up leaning against the wall, taking a breather. Stain ignored the immense pain of a blood-seeping elbow. He pulled out another dagger with his good arm, and lunged at her for a stab. Momo gasped, and dodged, as best she could, but she wasn't fast enough. She screeched out, as the blade was lodged into her left shoulder. She squeezed her eyes shut, refusing to let out any tears. You're a tough one, I'll give you that. For a second I even believed he was caught off guard because mom didn't give up. She grabbed the arm he stabbed with and raised her leg up and around his neck, pulling him in and locking him into a triangle submission hold, as best she could. I won't let go. I won't let go. She repeated in duress, not knowing what would happen if she did. She had used up most of her quirk with her bear traps. This was her last stand. Rumi was still paralyzed, having been yelling and struggling this whole time. She was especially frustrated that she couldn't help Momo. As if endless, Stain had to force himself to pull out another dagger, but with his mangled arm. He gripped the hilt and raised his arm up. Droplets of blood fell on her. I will not falter. He roared before stabbing down. I won't let go. I won't let go. It pierced into her hip. Her head snapped back as she cried in pain. It was too much, she couldn't take any more. Her grip let go, and she slumped to the side, curling into herself, trying to nurse her wounded body. Stain emerged victorious. His knuckles smashed into his face, blasting him away. What the hell are you doing to my girlfriend? She was on the verge of passing out, but couldn't stop from lifting her lips up, if with only the last of her strength, because he called me his girlfriend. And she passed out happily. Don't worry, I'm here. Izuku Midoriya had shown up to confront the hero killer. Benko was chasing the woman that could float, and Koichi had Iri strapped to his back, as he zipped, as fast he could back to UA, he glanced back at the magician that was chasing them. Tenko we have a problem. He's throwing cars at me. As he zigged and zagged down the street avoiding flying cars. Tenko ignored his pleas. He had actually jumped onto one of the tossed cars and used its momentum to jump even higher and land on a building. He was on a roof close enough to her. The woman that floated. He jumped, reaching her. She noticed him and pulled away slightly, but he had planned his fingers on her mask, slowly disintegrating it. His eyes grew as he stared at her. She was staring back with hazy calm eyes. Nana Shimura. Mirko's paralysis had worn off, only finding out when she cheered at Izuku's appearance, because she had raised her arm up after his slobber knocker punch. The impact had sent Stain flying, but he had recovered in midair, having kicked back on the wall before he crashed into it, landing on the ground. He held his face, nursing the wound to his pride. He was the one who struck without those being aware of his presence until it was too late, and yet here was some student who got the jump on him. Boy, I can move again. Mirko hopped to her feet, pumped to get into the fight, except there was a hand on her shoulder. Izuku held her back. Take care of Momo. That was all he said before walking ahead of her to take on the battle with Stain. As Midoriya and Stain stared each other down, Rumi noticed her little brother's posture. His hands were in his pockets, and his eyes were hidden. He's keeping his fists restrained and averting his eyes purposely. She realized how pissed off he was and decided to let him handle it himself. She ran over to Momo and slung her over her shoulder. Oi, his quirk involves paralyzing, I don't know how it works, but it happened after he cut me. And don't worry about her, the wounds aren't deep. She lied about the last part, but right now she doesn't need Izuku to be distracted. She would concern herself with Momo. Mirko even mumbled praise to the passed out girl. You were scared, but didn't hesitate. You're going to be a great hero, I'll make sure of it. He nodded, appreciating the information, pretending he didn't hear the words of encouragement Rumi gave Momo. As long as I don't get cut I don't have to worry about how his quirk works. He glanced back one more time to Momo before focusing all his attention on Stain. Mirko made sure she had a firm grip on Momo. Once she was assured, she squatted down before leaping, attempting to leave the back alley by air. There is no escape for false idols like you, the promiscuous lunar bunny. Stain had leapt after her, running up a wall, and then jumping again, getting close to her. Rumi glared back at him. Oh, I, did you, did you just call my sis a slut? Izuku, out of nowhere, had transmitted in between Mirko and Stain. It was the first time Stain was able to get a good look at Izuku's face. And it was contorted in anger. 
Stain did not hesitate and sliced, attacking him. Izuku had flipped up and over the strike. Being above Stain facing down at him, Izuku gave a brutal twisting kick, slamming his red shoe into him, hurtling Stain through the alley. I don't give a damn about your hero killing ideology, but I won't forgive you for hurting and insulting the women in my life. Koichi was speeding down the street, still desperately avoiding random objects that were being thrown at him. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. He sang, or more so, yelled to himself, and he re in panic. The little girl strapped to his back was simply giggling along, thinking it was a faster version of the game they were playing earlier. Yeah, everything is alright, just don't look back, okay. In the sky, Tenko had been staring at his grandmother, nothing but shock etched in his eyes. Nana Shimura extended her hand out, gracing his face with her fingers before cupping his cheek. She tilted her head with a faded smile. Tamura, his orbs grew vivid in that moment, letting himself be vulnerable. She struck him with her other fist sending him crashing down into the street. She remained in the sky, floating, as she looked on. Tenko didn't even feel the pain of the attack. He easily picked himself up from the ground, staring back up at her. She let out a sigh before deciding to leave. It was his eyes, they remained unchanged and wide. He couldn't stop himself this time, he helplessly scratched at his itchy neck, staring up at where she had been in the sky. What did they do to her? He couldn't stop the irritation, almost peeling the skin away. He wasn't even aware of the flying objects barreling his way. He did notice the cloak Nana had on earlier, had fallen beside him. But, as he was losing himself to frustration, Koichi came speeding past him begging for help. Yet, what got his attention was eerie, she was staring directly into his eyes with a blank expression, as if not knowing how to react to this side of her big brother, Tinko Shimura. And they sped past him. Shigaraki's eyes were shadowed, as he straightened himself out, no longer scratching himself. The magician also known as Mr. Compress was hopping over to Mara. The magician was uncompressing objects with his quirk in midair, using them as platforms to get through, as he threw and uncompressed objects at Koichi. A cloak suddenly appeared in front of him, blocking his view. Wait, doesn't that belong to Miz? He couldn't finish because he felt a shadow loom over him and turned around to face it. It was Tamura Shigaraki. He only said, I don't want Iri to see. Mr. Compress tried to free himself, but both of them became tangled inside the cloak. His finger lunged out, all ten of them striking like a snake, curling around his neck, squeezing until it crumpled into itself like a wet sandcastle. The cloak landed on the street with a thud. Koichi had stopped skating when he noticed that objects had stopped coming at him. He turned around and headed back. He returned seeing the cloak, something was shuffling inside of it. He gulped as it started to come out. Iri also peeked with her eyes, staring intently. And this time, it was Tenko Shimura that emerged, giving them a light-hearted smile, as Mr. Compress was nowhere to be seen. Beep. 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 Her ear twitched, picking up on the sound. She began to stir, her eyes struggled to open, but eventually did. She was confused by the surroundings of the hospital room until she recalled her last conscious memory. She tried to survive from the hero killer until her boyfriend saved her. She stared at the ceiling. Her eyes were watering up. I completely failed Izuku and Mirko. She didn't feel she had the right to call her big sis Rumi anymore. She was starting to think she never should have even received the letter of recommendation that got her accepted into UA Izuku got her a great internship opportunity and she wasted it, her injuries weren't going to recover by a week's time. She rolled her head to the side, and her liquid eyes widened before they could spill. Her lips lifted, removing some of her doubt. Oh, Izuku he was passed out on a chair by her bedside. His notebook was by his head on the bed with his hand barely holding the pen, leaving trace marks over the page, and blanket. Momo attempted to sit up without bothering him, but, as soon as she tried, her wounds caused her to wince, letting out a hiss, as she did her best to hold in the pain. It caused him to stir before lifting his head. Momo and it was his soft concerned voice and fragile emerald eyes. He cleared his throat and returned to his stoic nature as he got off the chair and leaned to her. He helped her sit up, making sure she was okay. I'll go get the doctors. Sit tight. He had his hand over her wrist and forearm, squeezed softly before letting go, walking out of the room. As he walked into the hospital halls, he saw that some, if not most, of her classmates were also worried, waiting, some sleeping. They all turned to the sound of the door. They tensed seeing him, even though they were aware he was in there. He shadowed his eyes as he spoke to them. She's awake. And he left to go find her doctor. Her classmates all cheered, Sayu even went out of her way to thank Izuku for letting them know and also for protecting her from stain. He brushed it off, but did grunt a welcome in response to her blank waiting stare. The students that were there rushed inside to see their vice president. She in turn gave them a reassuring smile letting them know she was fine and thanking them for their concern. We're all just glad you're okay, we all came to the hospital when we found out. Froppy explained. 
Jiro was hugging Momo, getting tearful, seeing her friend's injuries. Can you believe it, Yao Momo? You were on the news. They wrote an article, and everything. Kirishima happily shoved his phone to her face. Harden. They did. Her eyes grew before narrowing with knitted eyebrows, as she read the article. Now, as Momo Yayoi Rozu reads the events that transpired after surviving Stain, we must also examine it, although we will to its true extent. Because of course, the news cannot report that which it does not know. The Zuku Midoriya and the hero killer, Stain were staring each other down. Stain had struggled, but got back to his feet after the kick Izuku delivered to him. Although he was battered and bloody he was still going to confront Izuku. He pointed his only remaining blade at him with his declaration. You who won the sports festival, your actions are that the furthest from a hero, you are not worthy to be associated with the number one hero, All Might. Usually, this would have been the point where Izuku would agree about his relation to All Might, but right now he was too angry for his typical banter. One of his fists was clenched, and only one eye was shadowed. The other was glaring at Stain. He didn't hesitate to bolt towards him with his arm pulled back. Boosh, slice. The dagger whizzed past him, piercing the side of his torso, ripping through the uniform, leaving a gash. Nani Azuku thought Stain's only working arm was the one holding his last remaining sword. His eyes widened, not believing that Stain had thrown it with the arm that was mangled by Momo's bear traps. Shit, that was the one thing Rumi warned me about. Although, he wasn't paralyzed yet, so didn't stop his rush to Stain. The hero killer was scampering at Izuku like a wounded cat, hunched low, waiting to pounce. Stain sliced upwards as they reached each other. Izuku had sidestepped it, unknowingly exposing the bleeding wound he had. With Izuku distracted by the trajectory of the blade, Stain lunged out with his face, attempting to get some of Izuku's blood. He noticed at the last second. He instinctively raised his knee into Stain's jaw, shutting his mouth and trying to create some space between the two, but before Stain stumbled away, he hacked his blade diagonally down, Izuku blocked with his forearm, causing the blade to break through the flesh, ripping it as Stain yanked it back. Izuku held in the pain, seeing the hero killer pulling the blade close to his face about to lick the blood, Izuku stepped up to him smacking him square in the mouth, launching him down the alley. Ah! Izuku grunted because for the first time he could recall in a long time his fist was in pain. What? His eyes widened, his knuckles were bleeding. I won. I was betting that you realized once you realized how my quirk worked, I lured you in. I bit down on you first, as you punched me. The pain is nothing to my resolve. He cried out, as he went flying, bouncing, and skidding on the ground. He swallowed his blood. Izuku was paralyzed. Although Stain clawed back to his feet, almost completely drained, he noticed something. Izuku Midoriya had yet to fall from his quirk's effect. Stain slowly walked to him, rubbing his jaw. To still be standing, I was right not to underestimate you, but you are no hero. Stain had picked up the blade that fell from his grip after Izuku's attack. You lost. But Izuku was able to pull off a smirk. You still haven't heard them yet? Stain hesitated before focusing his ears. Police sirens. She was able to create and send a distress signal while fighting you. You have nowhere to run. Stain was looking around, but he could hear, almost see the light of the sirens, as they neared closing off his exits. He was drowning in denial shaking his head. No. No, no, none of you can take me down except a true hero. I'll only let All Might. You were beaten by one Izuku, through his paralysis, was still standing, glaring at him. Stain viciously pointed his blade at him again. You are no hero. It wasn't me. She was the one who was able to hold out even though she was scared. She was the one able to keep you restrained long enough. She was the one who took you down. Stain's eyes grew as the words stabbed into him. A distress signal. When she sent out all her bear traps that's why she refused to let go. This whole time I thought that was her last attack, but it was a distraction. She was sending out her location. That's how he showed up. Izuku took notice of his stunned state. He reinforced his glare to crush Stain's will. I'll reiterate, the hero killer who terrified Japan was defeated by a first-year high schooler who was scared for her life. You're not terrifying, you're a coward who can't even knock down a paralyzed delinquent. Stain gritted his teeth, his mouth having been bleeding since Izuku's punch, but his eyes were blind with rage. He gripped his blade with both hands somehow, fueled by pure anger. He sprung into the air at Izuku, deciding to take him down with him. You're still stuck in place. Stabbing forward at his chest. His eyes were shadowed as the distorted sound erupted out of him, blitzing towards Stain. Smash. It blasted the hero killer with a brutal straight hook with nothing but precise knuckles, sending him flying through the alley for the final time. But he was paralyzed were the last things he mumbled before he passed out midair, trying to recall what happened. Bunny ears. Crashing into the ground. In front of a cop car that had blocked the path. Although brief, Stain thought he saw two different figures, almost correlated perfectly next to each other, acting as Midoriya. 
one was the actual Izuku, but the other had the appearance of a feral bunny with a slim body, having slender arms and legs. Its hair was longer and wilder, although its most contrasting feature was that although it had a similar face to Izuku, their expressions were complete opposites, with Izuku's being stoic and the other not afraid to have its heart on its sleeve, having its expression bare. Its eyes were a fragile lightning, sparking with fractured confidence. And before it let out its battle cry it was that of Izuku's gentle voice. Its knuckles were carved with battle wounds and its right arm was tattered with scars. The figure seemingly resonated with Midoriya, vanishing, as the fight came to an end. Izuku stared at Stain's fallen figure one more time before walking away. Although you are right. I am not a hero, his eyes shadowed as he combed his right hand over his hair. I am a modern crusader. Izuku Midoriya, the end. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic. Link is in the description. See you next time. Till then sayonara.